same school as the humans colony. The star, your mother, for Gracie Hale. Number one, Hayden Whitaker. Number two, Woody Hawley. Number three, Ben Bloomer. Number four, Tony Gay. Number five, Arthur Dean. Number six, West 22, Luke Griffin. Number seven, Annie Captain, Tate Williams. Number eight, James Hunter. Number nine, Connor Murphy. Number ten, Archie Nicklin. Good morning everyone, or good afternoon I should say. Welcome back to the Stone X Stadium here in North London. We're going to start off today with the Continental Tire Schools Cup Under 18 Bowl. Today is the second day of action here in North London. We've already had the Under 15s finals yesterday and today the only difference in the, in the days is actually not the quality of rugby, not the excitement of the commentary team. It's the weather. It stops raining. It is slightly windy here in North London but we're not going to let the grey skies get grey on our parades by any means for the sun is shining because rugby is about to take place and I'll give you another reason why you should all be smiling not just because the sun will be shining but because an England Rugby World Cup winner is with us in the form of none other than the legendary the awesome the amazing Rocky Clark well good afternoon what a beautiful little intro I need you every morning to be Picking me up, pumping up my tyres, pardon the pun. I'll, uh, I'll send it to you as a little voice note, and I could be your alarm clock every morning. That's absolutely fine by me, don't you worry. Um, just talk to me quickly, Rocky. Yesterday was a fantastic day of rugby action to enjoy. Today's going to be by no means any different, is it? I know, I'm really excited. We had such good competitions yesterday. Obviously, four games was a marathon of commentary, but we loved it, and we got even more today. So can't wait for the quality of these stars to come out and give it everything. Well, and we've got two top quality sides in competition today as well. Richard Hewish against Richard Hale. We're going to take a look at the teams starting with the Richard Hale side. So in that front row, you've got Hagen Whitaker, Woody Watling and Finn Bloomer. In the second row behind them, Tommy Day and Arthur Deacon. Luke Griffiths will be playing in the number 22 jersey, but on that blind side flank, accompanied by the captain, Tate Williams and James Hunter, completing that back row trio. Connor Murphy and Archie Nicklin, the half-back pairing. Peter Holmes and Oliver Shanley on either wing, respectively. Tom Tom Rutter outside centre, but Troy Sullivan on the inside, but wearing that number 20 jersey rather than 12, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And Morgan Jackson completes the Richard Hale starting 15 in at fullback. And here is your challengers, the second team, Richard Hewish College. Starting in that front row, you have Charlie Hartland, Oscar Taylor and Jan Davidson. In the second row, you've got Rowan Curry and Theo Backhouse. And in the back row, you've got Dylan Nation, Kieran Hill and Nathan Golding. Ollie Guest and Zeki Harston, the halfback pairing. Ned Burlingham and Ethan Norris on either wing, respectively. Sam Gray is the captain in at inside centre with Kieran Golding alongside him. And Ollie Dads rounds off the park at fullback. Well, we've met the starting 15s of Rocky. We've got about 70 minutes before 70, mi 70 minutes. So I'm just getting too excited, Rocky. I can barely contain my excitement. We've got 70 minutes from kickoff that separates either one of these two teams from glory and also from winning your very coveted Player of the Match award. Indeed. So we've got to wait for the stars to run out. But I've just seen in their warm-ups two different approaches. You've got Hewish who are doing more ball handling and get, getting through tighter channels, and then you've got Hale practicing all their set piece and looking, you know, so looking so drilled, so well looked after. I can't wait for this game. So talk to me about this Stone X pitch as well. You played on it a, a multitude of times at Rocky, and it was biblically wet yesterday. I think Noah was going to pull off on his arc at one point, unfortunately. And will that play into effect today? Is the pitch quite well at draining itself and drying out? But, I mean, it is still quite cold out here. It's a little nippy, but, you know, those youngsters are going to be playing a really high-tempo game and, you know, something we're super excited to see. But, you know, the, the standing water will have all been drained away, so it's going to be a really, really fast pitch. And one thing to bear in mind is the wind that we're still getting a little bit coming across, as well as how the ball bounces. It is really hard to, to anticipate where the ball will bounce, except on a muddy pitch, you kind of know which way it's going to go. But here, it's anyone's ball. It really is anyone's game. And if you needed confirmation of what the wind is like you can take a look at those continental tires flags at the edge of the pitch flapping in the wind as we take a moment to welcome both Richard Hale and Richard 
Jewish schools onto the pitch for what is set to be a titanic encounter between these two Richard School sides. It is a game that will be by no means an easy walk in for either of these sides. They have met fierce challenges on their way to the Stonex Stadium. They've both achieved big score lines as well, sometimes winning by 40 plus points. But today is a different occasion altogether. It's a neutral ground. And there's a certain buzz in the air. The adrenaline in their bellies will be fueling them from minute one to minute 70. And Rocky Clark sometimes is about how you control those emotions in the big games and hone them to your benefit, really. Yeah, it's about getting into the game early, settling. You can't stress about the occasion. You just need to do what you've done so well, building into getting to the finals. And now it's about who can settle into the game first. Well, that is an early mistake from Hewish School. Option scrum. But I'm not sure Zeki Harston will let it get to his head too much. There's still plenty of time left in this game to make amends for a mistake at kickoff. And a really rocky, it's not the end of the world because as a forward, you probably like starting the game with a scrum. Yeah, gets you straight into it, doesn't it? You, I love it. You're in that one on one battle against your opposite number. First few scrums are a little bit messy. You're trying to work each other out. But I just love that, that battle up front. Oh. Richard Hale on the right hand side of your screen in that distinctive black and gold kit. Hewish on Five. the left in their lovely green strip. Set! Oh, uh, sort of looking very reminiscent of a junior, junior South now. African side in that strip for Rocky. Are we going to see some, some springs in their steps today, do you reckon? Uh, I'd imagine so. What I love 50. about youth rugby is that they, they're not scared to have a go. Like you, you watch the under-20s internationals and they are throwing the ball about and they're, they're confident to have a go and that's what I love to see. Well, this is good work so far from Hewish in defence to force Hale back behind where the scrum originally took place from. But if Hewish done really well here to turn the ball over, they have indeed, and that means that Oli Guest will take the ball from the ruck and send it into that back line. So Hewish can really build something special here. Opting to go down that blind side, he was actually Guest with a little pick and go. He's won his side of penalty and they will indeed take it. Slightly high challenge from the Hale side. And Rocky, these are the challenges that you need to stamp out from minute one. Exactly. Really good line speed by Hewish. They were patient, waited for the turnover, got it, been rewarded again with a penalty. This is a perfect way to get themselves into the game. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Well, so the ball has gone out into play, but let's take a look at that turnover. Here's a replay of it now. This is great work at the breakdown from the Hewish school. Getting over the ball, yeah, nice and low, nice and okay. strong as well. It's the tight Let's head go, drop, Jan Davison. Yes, the prop. You love seeing stuff like this from the front rowers, don't you, Rocky? I do indeed. I talked about them being like an extra back row and fantastic to see tight head prop up there. Clean ball for Hewish once more off the line out, taken up by Guest. Didn't have a clear sight of line through to the rest Easy of his green. backs. And so Hewish have to operate with some slightly slower ball. What are we saying? It's time to find out what Hale can do in defence. And well, they forced the mistake from the Richard Hewish side. They've knocked it on at the breakdown. They've conceded possession, and that is the end of their most recent attack. It's going to be an arm wrestle, isn't it, in this first 10 minutes, trying to assert themselves each time. But just forcing that little knock on. It's Tommy Day of the Hale School that got in there and forced the mistake when it came to the tackle area. Really good to see the second rower competing right from the get-go, to be honest, Rocky. Yeah, and we've seen some Six. really good work rate by the second rows in the, in the past day, so I'm expecting nothing less good. than that today. Taken back in the 22. And in goes the first big kick of the game from Nicklin. He's found a lot of space in behind Ollie Dads and the fullback has got a wave of Richard Hale students around him, four in total. They're right on their dead ball area here, Hewish. They're in a lot of trouble now. It's carried over and because they were the ones to take it back into their own line and ground the ball under pressure, it will be a five-meter scrum in favor of Richard Hale. We said it yesterday, let's say it again today, Rocky. Your kick's only green. as good as your chase. Scrum black. Absolutely, and that pressure that they put on. But I'd, I'd be asking questions why Hewish are, are shifting the ball along behind the try line. Obviously, it's very brave, but what comes to that is the, the cost of, of getting caught out. 
But here's another look at it when now. And it. Holly Dance initially did really Five. well to to evade the tackle, but unfortunately the, the presence of Hale up on that kick chase Set. was just too much for Hewish to deal with. Stay on side nine. Okay, That's a really good go. scrum contest as well between the two sides and Hale now going out to the blind, reaching for the line and scoring is Morgan Jackson. Fantastic work from the Richard Hale fullback. He's got the first try of the game and it's gone to the black and gold. And that's brilliant. That's all the pressure that they've applied. Fantastic line from Morgan Jackson there, who just came on at real pace, offered himself, got short, and then just using that instance just straight through, lands, and then presents. Really good. Outstretched arm. What a finish. What a way yeah, to yeah. get into the game early on. Fantastic score. Great ball control on the floor, really, as well, from the, uh, from the fullback, because so often you see players go for that reach, and they just lose control of the ball, don't they, Rocky? And they end up knocking it on. Yeah, it is a risk, but he knew he was under... He was certain to be able to score, so brilliant to see. Well, this will be the first kick of the game for the post for Archie Nicklin. Lovely height to it, and it's sailed through both uprights. Two extra points for Richard Hale, and they take the lead of this fixture. Seven points to nil against the Richard Hewish side in pursuit of that coming in under 18 bars. Perfect start for Hale, getting in, getting the score early. They're getting possession back now. They just need to make sure they don't concede a try straight away. It's gone 10. That's a much better kickoff for Richard Hewish from Zeki Harston. Really good pressure from the kickoff as well, actually, by the Hewish School. Is this the wake up call that they needed to really start getting physical in this fixture? Another dominant tackle, double tackle going in there. Taken back! Tight head prop involved again, and second row. It's that Jan Davison once again. Theo Backhouse. Mistake, though, in the backfield from Hewish means it's very much alive here for Richard Hale to counter on. Oliver Shanley just couldn't quite break through from that offload. Really good carry there. Once more, Richard Hale go to the blind side, thinking they found a bit of space. But they are bundled into touch, out on the far side. And that, once again, is a wake-up call for Hewish. I don't know how many more they need. Yeah, and it was quick thinking of Troy Sullivan to shift the point of attack. Running through there, moved it across. Beautiful kick as well, it must be said, by Archie Nicklin. Those ones are incredibly difficult to catch, and Backwards, that's probably in. why they're able to claim it with Tom Rutter. He did really well, the outside centre. Yeah, and then he got that pass away to Troy, and then Troy pushed it as wide as well. Well, and a penalty. Three green holding on, three black. The penalty is against Jan Davison holding on the floor from yep. the tight head for Hewish. Three green. So that's Sorry. an easy invitation for Richard Hale to knock this in the corner, Rocky. Yeah, that's exactly what you don't want. You've just been scored fellas, against please. and then pressure's on. You give another penalty and they're five metres out. Step out. Come on, Black, let's go! Black, let's go! When well, here's the replay of the challenge, Five, it was really good awareness from Finn Bloomer to get over the top and start challenging for that ball from Richard Hale. So two Black, tight heads out, going up out. against each other. It's going to be a, Black, a tasty out, game overall, out. I think, Rocky. Exactly. Five. They're uh, they're going, well, if you can do it, I can do it too. So seeing uh, him go for that jackal and getting rewarded. Knock on advantage. Well, Hale have lost that ball at the line-out, so Hewish have a chance to attack out from their own line, or will they kick for territory? Well, they've got numbers here if they want to use it on this blindside wing, and the pass is successful. Ethan Norris now sees a bit of space in behind, exploits it with a lovely weighted kick, but Hale are back in defence to claim it. Really good work there from Nicklin to actually stay on his feet and keep the ball alive for his skill. Big carry there from Arthur Deacon. Well done. No six! Lovely little bounce out well as well. Done. So he took it two tacklers with him, which shortened up the open side. Bounces high. Great line speed from Hewish. Over the shoulder. And a warning about the tackle height again from the referee, this time against Nathan Golden from Richard Hewish. 
Rocky, these are mistakes, really, uh, that you can't afford to give away yeah, across the course of a please. whole game because we've been very clear in needing to drop that height of the tackle. Yeah, that's obviously a big thing for the referees, and player safety is the most important thing here. So, yeah, you just have to really drop your height, and although it's really good line speed, just drop, got to drop another six inches to Defensive just take that pressure down. off. They need to be so much more disciplined now. Here's a look at that high shot. It's he did five, get his five, arm five, over the top of the shoulder game. and around the neck, so very clearly a high tackle. Can't yeah. imagine those are fun to be on the other end of, Rocky. No, they're not, but also I, I've been caught out with that. When somebody steps, you're off balance and you, you just grab out, and unfortunately he went the seat belt over the top. Well, this is a really good line-out drive set from Richard Hale. They've managed to barge oh, their way into the Hewis 22 now, and still they go forward. One. The referee Play calls for once, though. Oh. That's the end of that attack. Here comes Troy Sullivan. He went to tip that on to take Williams, the captain, but the pass, the weight of it to Williams was unfortunately a bit too heavy for the open side to control. Yeah, I love the intent there, the little tip on to the uh, seven flying for a really hard line. But yeah, it just bounced off his chest, didn't it? Tate will be disappointed with that. We'll take another look at it now. Got told to use it quickly, and so they did. It was almost as if he just took his eye off the ball for a split second. And I know, Rocky, we want to see the defenders in front of us, but you can't afford to do that when you're looking to claim a vital offload. Yeah, you, even, even if they're in your eye line, you have to watch the ball. I mean, there was probably a little bit too much on the pass as well, but running full tilt, that is difficult stay ball there, to, stay there, to stop. Well done, take back. Really strong push there, actually, from the Richard Hale side. It was almost as if they were going to win that scrum. But there goes Sam Gray, and there goes the loose ball for Richard Hewish. So... They're going to have to tidy this one up quickly. It's still loose. It's still frantic. They're throwing it around like a sevens team right on their own line. It's a really risky play from the Richard Hewish team. And finally, Nathan Golding says enough is enough. He wants to carry straight and carry hard and get inside a little bit of safety here. But they're going down the blind side. There is space if they want to use it. Here we go. Two on one. Hewish against Hale. Lovely pass. Ethan Norris in a little bit of space there. Off sidelines. No hands. We've got off sidelines. Use it. Big carry from the tight head, Jan Davison. Number four, you're upright above the sternum. And once again, Stop. another call for a Play high shot, there. this time against Tommy Day of the Hale School. And Hughes should have gone quickly no here. Hands. Wrong side. Thank you. Rocky, is it encouraging as well to see a referee giving a clear explanation to the player as to why there was a penalty yeah. there? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, we're going to have a look at this break now from Nathan Golding. He's got a man outside him as well in support. That's Dylan Nation. Time off. Referee's called time off. Let's just have a listen to what he's going to talk about here with the captain, Tate Williams. Two high tackles in a row. Okay, two occasions in a row where they've been upright. We've had a previous high tackle as well. Go speak to your players. Lower at the waist. Tackle safer. Have a word with the team, please. Referee just giving the captain of the Richard Hale School a reminder that we should not be tackling that high, and he needs to have a quick word with his team. Uh, Rocky, this has been great refereeing so far, actually, because as I just said, a clear explanation as to why a penalty was given, but now an opportunity for Richard Hale to try and control their discipline too. Okay, fellas, yeah, have a word. Hewish have been against the yeah, ropes. Okay. They've given a lot of penalties away, and now the tides seem to have turned. Few, few high tackles coming in from okay. Hale. So both teams just need to get a little bit better with their 15, discipline, really lower that right. tackle height, that's been Watch the main offence in this kick. game. And well, that's a really good kick for touch as well for right, Hewish, they yeah. are right in that hail corner. And we were just admiring a lovely replay of the initial break from Nathan Golding too, and great support from his fellow back rower Dylan Nation. Let's get some appreciation, that kick was beautiful, I Let's would be three. doing cartwheels as a prop on the five metre line with a good maul. Well here we go, Hewish five metres out with the line out. And it's brought down to Golding at the back and they're marching through completely unopposed. And I don't think that Nathan Holding will score an easier try in his career. And the referee just explaining to Hale why that try stands because I think they were trying to go with the tactic of not competing and therefore a more not being formed. That is, I mean, it's sometimes a clever move but also a really, really risky move. So they've they've stepped back, they haven't engaged, but if the ball stays... 
Yeah, they've uh, they've gone through. It's a risky move. They've been caught out there, unfortunately. They got very unlucky, the Richard Hale School. But great, smart rugby from Richard Hewish. And now an opportunity to tie the game. Well, Ollie Dad sends that straight through the uprights despite the best charge down efforts of Oliver Shanley. And he draws his side level. It's seven apiece here at the Stonex Stadium in North London in this under 18 schools vast final. Say again. Yeah, so that for it to be an obstruction, someone has to be Rocky is another look at that try. And the ball was kept at the front the whole time. And then when we got over line, then he let go. We dotted it down for a try. Okay. Okay, explanation there because. What you can't do is transfer the ball when, when they don't compete at it. Otherwise, that's obstruction. And the referee's saying that the transfer was only made after they've gone over the try line. Therefore, the try, try counters. So the second row that caught it should keep hold of the ball until they've gone over. Then the transfer can happen. There you go. More you go. clear explanations coming in so from our officiating can we, team. Can we keep the space between the bind and the set? And Maintain how important space, is it actually that you get a referee in these sorts of games, Rocky, that communicates you communicates with you openly and clearly as well about the different decisions yeah I love having Crouch. that report of a referee where they you know they'll be really clear they're authoritative Five. they know what their expectations are and if if you do get penalized Set. for something oh, you want to know what ball. it's for and you want to know that you're not going to do it again because half okay, of this game is down to referees interpretations you have to play well, how back. they're refereeing well here come Hewish off that of that scrum that's a big hit going in on Kieran Golding and it's still very much alive here for Kewish. Big carry now going in from Sam Gray, the captain, Never trying to lead his side by Looking. example. Touched by Black, all that. Everyone's on side. There was a little, a little deflection off the kick Touch. of Guest. Take him back, take him back. And Hale are going to come and play out from the back here with Morgan Jackson. Okay, no lift. And unfortunately, Hale couldn't get that out to the blind side. Instead, Nicklin had to take that in. Patient play so far from Richard Hale. A really good defence from Hewish too, it must be said. There's a loose pass that they won't want to see happen again. So Whittaker has to collect that one. And the loose has done really well there, Rocky. He has indeed. I love seeing a prop bounce to first. Hagen Whittaker bouncing through really strong. Had to go and tidy up. That's what you want from your Let's front row. First, then we can jackal. Direct and hard, confrontational. We're seeing a lot of really good ball skills from all the front rowers uh, here so far this week. We saw it a lot yesterday. We're seeing it so far today. Uh, a front rower has got to be more than just a scrummager these days, haven't they, Rocky? The oh, green, absolutely. Yeah, gone are the days where you could just scrum and line out. Yeah, Obviously, that's your bread and butter. You can't, you can't be poor at it and then expect to play a high level. You've got to be really good at your set piece. But then, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, analysis of how many touches front five get and generally there's a there are quite often front five touches mean that you're going to have a good day at the office and quite often you get the wins with it a lot of movement at the line out here from Richard Hale great contest from Hewish and just as they look to steal the ball right out the front with a big second row of Rowan Curry more line just a little bit complicated, wasn't it? I don't think it needed that. It could have just been a little bit more simple. It's knocked on in the line out, so we'll go 15, yeah. Well, they're claiming it is a knock on by the Richard Hale school, so Richard Hewish have got the scrum. Yeah, and they were patient in that line out. It just Same stayed there, waited, time, went up, got a finger on, and then it was a, a knock on from Hale. Big shove coming in oh, from the hail pack shove. again. Hewish under a lot of pressure oh, here. So Guess seven, is going to have to Nine, go. dig and tidy Nine. this up. And here comes Hewish on the, the attack. No, Crunching no, tackle no, no. from side. Nicklin on Harston, his opposite number. And Hewish now going to the blind side Turn with Kieran Hill. Hold there, Stay there. Well, that's gone out of the back of the hands yeah. of Guess. Frantic stuff for Richard Hewish school. Here we go now. Into the open play. 
sidelines. Oh, There's a bit of space in here for Harston to take advantage of. Really good chase from Hewish as well, and a trip at the crucial moment from Jackson. Two's legal. Sorry, 12's legal. He's picked it up. It's fine. Well, and they've turned it over through their captain, Sam Gray. You heard him on the ref, Mike. He was absolutely it. fine, and that's great work from the centre. Hewish really starting to build something special, but you were held. the second movement yeah, after being held in the tackle means the penalty is conceded, and the captain, Tate Williams, he's gone quickly. A statement of intent from the open side, and here come Richard Hale. There he Tackle is, Whitaker going hard on, again, hold on. bowling ball going through, bouncing Use and spinning. It's another really good nine. carry from Finn Bloomer, did well to ride the initial in front, hit. Seven, you're in front, just hold. And there's hold. a spiral bomb just and a half on. from Archie Nicklin into the backfield. Got snow on it. Just stand still. They're so difficult to catch those spirals when they're done right, and there's another one. Stand Clearly still, he's been guys. Them all week. Stop. Ollie stop, Guest stop. is trotting around, looking to pick up the ball for Richard Hewish. There's a large broken field in front of him. What's he going to elect to do? He's gone forwards. Well, Tactics. he's not that ball long, attempting to offload from the floor. And so Hale can attack down the blind side, but a penalty conceded as well. Okay. Deliberate knock on. Both teams have clearly been doing a lot of work on their offloading skills, getting the ball into space, but particularly we're seeing Hewish looking at that, that pass from on the floor. So as they've got tackled in that chest pass, but that one just got away from Ollie Guest there. It just went forward. As I said earlier, it's a little bit windy, so you want to be pushing it back towards your teammate, running onto it, but maybe go just a bit more force backwards against this wind. Well, this is a uh, a confidence decision from the Richard Hale score. Archie Nicklin says it's within his range, and he's going to go for the three points from out on that far side. He's within the 15-metre channel, actually, on that far side of the pitch, Rocky. Even though he's 30 metres out, it's still a very difficult angle to work yeah, with. This is, this is a huge kick. If he gets this, this will be really lifting the Hale score and just ticking that scoreboard over exactly what you want. Play on. It's off the post, so thank goodness Hale had the chase from their captain Tate Williams, but it's a broken field for Richard Hewis to take advantage of if the offload can get away, and it can. That's a wild out of the back pass too, but it's worked out. Kieran Hill was the one throwing the risky ball, and Ethan Norris tidies take things up. I so thought it was sailing through the posts, Rocky, but it's come off of one of the bars, yep. and Hewish have a chance here to attack from deep. Not held. It's the battle of the sevens at the moment. Both of Never them the working really hard. Kieran Hill now black. and Tate Williams. What a matchup! Kieran with that wild out the back pass, and Tate with the chase up made the tackle. His number is over here for Hewish if they want to use it, if they can get the ball out there. Hill is chopped to the ball. floor before he can reach Backwards. second gear. Yeah. There's a lot of wild passes going in. I said it once and I'll say it again. This is very reminiscent of a seven circuit match as we see Troy Sullivan putting in a big hit. It's almost Harlem Globetrotters, isn't it? He's obviously done loads of work on keeping the ball alive. Well, and here comes Hill again, Tackle clearly. A big ball down. carrier for the Richard back. Hewish side. No, don't play it into him. Okay, well no done. penalty conceded there by Richard because Arthur Deacon was really trying everything to get out of that ruck and he was being held in. But now we've got a break here for Hewish. Lovely oh, offload yeah. from Zeki Harston. Okay. And Ollie Guest sends that one downfield from the box kick. It's sailing over the back of the Richard Hale school. But the only one up Take chasing is Ethan Norris. Take him back! Nine, stand still! 15 on 15 action, Jackson versus Dad. Tackle and Jackson now. seems to have won the dominant hit for his Richard Hale school. But Hale can see the penalty going off their feet. Dad's wanted to go quickly, but he can't. When beyond the ball, then off feet. 
again, clear explanation from the referee. He's having His a super off game. The floor. Keep rocking through. He's seeing everything. Okay, let's go. Ten. Ten the kick. Both teams there uh, having to to regroup. Because it's been so fast it, paced this last five minutes. Seem to have hit another Fellas, level. Should we this paint, please? Well, let's take a look at the big hit that went in slightly oh. earlier on. Here's a view of it for you. There's the Harlem Gro Globetrotters pass. And that Nine's is... Off. What? <laughs> what a tackle from Troy big, Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, great. He's obviously wearing the, the red scrum hat, so you can see him from everywhere. But yeah, he is thanks. getting through a hell of a lot of work and, and being uh, got a real buzz around him. Putting in hits like that is certainly what your team wants to see. That did not look straight from the get-go by Richard Hewish, and the referee agrees with me also. That's the risk of throwing to the tail on a windy pitch. Comes across into this bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, OK. And you can see those Continental tyres flags blowing in the wind. Yeah. You can see that there. there's a bit of weather to deal with. Here's another look at it, though. Good timing on the lift and the throw. It yeah, just it needed was, to be straighter. Yeah, it was perfect. Unfortunately, it just went to the outside arm rather than the inside arm. Crouch! Bind! Set! Wait for the ball! Hold black, stop! Good. Great scrum from Hale. Well, here come Richard Hale now. They've got that into the backfield. The pass should have gone, really, you could argue, as the ball spills out from the rucks. So now it's a chance for Hewish to disrupt things. Coming offside. Accidental offside there in the backfield, though. So, Richard Hale, they've played their only game of jail for free card, Rocky. Yeah, got away with that. So important they execute this line out. Last time they lost it in the 22. That's a real fighting chance there to get that more going. Green, please. Edge of the paint. He's, told, he's not told Well, me take a look at that. We've still got fans here today, Rocky. They're not here for us, though. Don't get too excited. They're here to support these fantastic sides and the brilliant rugby that we're being treated to today. Yeah, great to see. You saw them as we're hey, coming in. Black, come on. Well, they're supporting their teammates. Nice clean line out there for Richard Hale. It was Tommy Day that went up in the air to bring it down. And his side have set up a strong driving wall, kept alive. Still a chance. But Woody Watling is brought to the floor. And it goes into that back line. And out Richard Hale go from the Hewish 22. Kieran Golden getting through some work for Hewish, isn't he? Like, playing like a flanker, really strong. Lovely little ding over the top there by Nicklin. It could bounce for his team still. Gathered by Tom Rutter and heading to the corner with his teammate Peter Holmes. Time for some one-off runners for the Richard Hale School. Good carry from Whitaker once more. But a penalty. One holding on. 12 was on his feet. Whitaker holding on the floor as Sam Gray went in to compete for the ball. And Hewish have got out of a sticky situation. That's the Twelve only problem with feet. picking and going on your own. If you, on the tee, if you go quick and you get over the try line, fantastic. But if you go quick and you're isolated, you've really got to try and buy time. That's a shame for Whitaker. He's worked so hard and carried so well. Just needs a power to go with him next time. Yeah, time off. We've got time off here quickly, whilst a few changes are made by Richard Hale School. 14's coming. Black, you're on the line. You're on the 22. Step off the line. You're on the 22. Black. Well, we're into the final 10 minutes of this first half, and we're currently at seven apiece. And Hewish right on their own 22. That's an overthrow, but it's going to work out for them still. Ed Taylor tidying up nicely at the back, but conceding the penalty. And Hale will go quickly with their captain, Tate Williams. Williams well inside the 22 now. Hale with all the momentum if they can use it. Good carry there from Gawthorne. An advantage being played now for Richard Hale. Offside. Ball down, please, Would you take the points? 
Eight green offside. Use the line We're still bonus. quite far away from half time. I think they should go to the corner. They've got great physicality the back, look, in their forward Can't pack, Rocky, I feel. They do. Oh, it's a tough one. I, I think I'd have probably taken the, the points just to keep, just to keep applying Five the pressure. Lads. But bonus course, if they come away with seven, then obviously the right decision. Just time that run, eight. Okay, you were, you were fine, but you just flew a little bit too early. We knew this was going to be a, t a tight game, uh, a real seven. arm wrestle. We can see there the, the replay of the penalty conceded by Nathan Golding going in to compete for the ball. But unfortunately conceding the subsequent penalty that now sees Richard Hale five metres out from the Hewish line. OK. Time on. Green, you're on the line, please. Well, Hale have now oh, set the driving there. line out. Here they go, rumbling towards the line. Go Richard Hale school. Are they going to go over two? They're just short. Picking, going, scoring. On the line first. Richard Hale have got their second try of the game, and it came from a very dominant driving mall. And the effort and the risk has paid off, and the score will go to Joe Saunders. Joe Saunders, a right decision for Hale to go for the line out. It is a risk, but if you if you back your line out that much and you've got such a strong carrier like Joe Saunders to go through, risk has paid off. He didn't give up. He didn't go down. He kept those legs driving, and he kept nice and low as well. And he was rewarded with a stunning try. What a kick from Archie Nicklin. Squeezed it in on the right-hand side. And he adds the extra two for Richard Hale. So they now go 14-7 into the lead in this Continental Tire Schools Under-18 Vars final. Well, that's a nice lead going in at half-time. But there's still five minutes on the clock for Hewish to do something about it. Try and get the scores level. Got to get, try and get this ball back off kickoff or be patient once the phases of play to get possession. Off the foot, backwards. Well, it came off Troy Sullivan's foot for Richard Hale. One on five. And they'll now look to attack out from their own tw 22. Eight. James Hunter Five. was making the carry, Second the big number in. eight. Hi. Williams has gone quickly now. He wants his side to play with some pace, and that's, that's McCutcheon taking it up now. Big carry from the tight head, Finn Bloomer. What Five. a run. Really strong carry. Referee's not happy though. Had the same conversation with Black after three high tackles. It's two in a row uprights, very similar to what they did earlier in the game. They've got a lot better. Have a word with all your players and improve the picture, please. There you go. The message exactly the same to the Hewish school as it was to Richard Hale. Fair refereeing and a good point to make because you don't want to keep conceding high shot penalties. Exactly, and he's given them the opportunity to sort it out now. So if it still happens, you, you'd expect it. Okay, a yellow green. card. You, you have to respond to what referees Just demand. Outside the 50. Well, we know the referees aren't afraid to bring out their Four. cards. We saw it used yesterday. A couple of yellows floating around for high challenges Four, and seven. too many penalties being given away also. And that's another lovely kick from Archie Nicklin. Good territory gain there Green for Richard Hale, Green. Rocky. And this, a promising point to attack from. Yeah, we've seen them all work Six. really well. Don't so the leg at them all. Okay. Just yep. need to execute the line out. They got quite a trot on last time at this You're sort of gap. position. Let's go. Come on in. Come on. And they've gone with four players in this line out as well. Oh, no. Here we go. A fifth finally joining in Tommy Day. Most likely the line out leader here for Richard Hale. Backwards off green. But it's stolen by Hewish's Rowan Curry. Tackles inside. 
Great work from Over. the second rower to get up first and get Easy. a hand to it before his opposition could. Knock on advantage. But that is a knock on that Hewish didn't want to give away, Rocky. Yeah, an Rocky, even better position for them. Ten metres out. Hale have got the scrum. The backs will be licking their lips at this. All the fours have got rid of in the scrum. We've got everyone. They There's just need up. Hale to secure this ball, just get it out to the to backs, go. and you could two imagine minutes. another try could be on its way. Well, well they're about ten the metres out from the Hewish try line. Come on. They've loaded right. heavily on that far side of the pitch to Bye. us. They've only got Morgan Set. Jackson Hold. and Peter ball. Holmes on this nearer side. So we'll be interested to see where yeah, Sullivan nice. sends it. It's going to go to that near side. Sullivan on his own, tucked it underneath the armpit. He's still Tuck driving out. forward, Excellent. Sullivan. It's time for the pick and goes now from Richard Hale. Going forward is James Hunter. Ball! He's being held up in the tackle. He's got the ball, ball to the, the floor. Good initiative from the number eight to keep the attack alive. Tuck Tommy out. Day goes forward now. Here go the Richard Hale score with Watling and they concede another penalty right they in front of the Hewish try line. They're just handing them Seven's easy outs at this stage, Rocky. Two's held on. Yeah, Hewish have, we talked about Cats having nine lives. I think Hewish have used a couple here as well. One minute. Well, who knows how many chances they've got left. Just outside, edge of the paint. Black edge of the paint, and in that situation, it's not about getting your side as far away from the try line as possible. It's just about getting it into touch and getting your side back in possession, Rocky. Absolutely. Get rid of it. Get some territory. Step off, black edge of the paint. Green step off, your gut. Well, we're in the final few seconds of this first half. So here come Hewish attacking out from their own 22. Outside hand. I thought that was a good lineup, but referee making it clear they caught it on the outside. So of course it wasn't a straight throw. They're punished once again in a crucial area of the pitch, Rocky. They are. I think I'd just like to see them just go safe, just win the ball. Come up to the edge of the paint. Just hands it back another shot for Hale here. They've just got to try and close it out though. Going down 14 Crouch. points would not be ideal for them, but going in seven, Bye. get a score right back in it. Set! Wait for the ball. Hold Another black. really good Hold strong scrum from Hold the Richard the Hale there, side. Oh, Sullivan is at the base. He sends it into the back line. Here we go. Oh, Lovely oh. kick over the top from Nicklin. It's going to be gathered by his Hale side and charging for the line and scoring. <laughs> Peter Holmes gets Richard Hale's third of the day. Oh, and we've only just hit half time. Beautiful run. From Holmes there, real pace onto the ball. I loved his never give up attitude. The leg drive, quite wiry going through, He's really strong. Comes from this scrum. It's this little kick over the top from Nicky, and just look at that. Inch perfect from the fly half, and then the awareness of Tom Rutter to give that pass on. What a score, Rocky. Yeah, really good. Just moving that point of contact, isn't it? Like, just really clever. Just that quick pass from Rutter. Puts his winger away. Obviously a fantastic finisher. I think he's hurt his knee a bit, hobbling around. Well, oh, there's Half nothing time. a bit of tape won't uh, fix, yeah, isn't there, Rocky, repairs. in this game? You're in a final. You do what you can to stay on. Oh, he's got the magic spray. He'll be all right. The flags have stayed down, so no extra two points off that try, but that does bring us to the half-time break, and Richard Hale are 19-7 up against Richard Hewish in this Continental Tire Schools Under-18 Vars Final. We'll leave you with the highlights of the first half, but we will be back very shortly for 35 more minutes of high-intensity Schools Final Rugby. Tackle, right? Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, just re they've done well. Just make sure they keep it up, please.
You got me. Welcome back, everyone, to this Continental Tires Schools Under 18's Bowl Final. Currently, it's Richard Hale with the upper hand in proceedings, and they will kick off this second half to go along with it. Archie Nicklin hey, standing over the ball, ready to get his side started and continue building on their strong lead in this game so far. Take them back. And speaking of Tackle. strong leads, I've got one of the strongest Tackle members the of that World Cup winning side with me, Rocky Clark. You've joined me again for another half of scintillating rugby action. I know, it's been so electric. It is, it? It's going to be hard for Hewish to, to get 14 points up. Or narrow the gap, but never say never. Well, here comes Tom Rutter for Richard Hale. Hale already camping inside the Hewish 22, and there goes Tate Williams now, carrying nicely That's good. We're still for his side. The knock -on. It all came from a knock-on advantage, and we know how strong that Richard Hale scrum is, so I don't think they'll mind going back to use it again. Rocky, we can see a stream of pupils coming in now from the far side of the stadium. And I've just looked out to the edge of the park and there's a sea of buses that have started to arrive here ahead of the plate game later. But it's just going to help build the atmosphere for this match as well. Yeah, it's like the floodgates have opened. Bye. They are pouring in. And loads of signs Set. as well. Brilliant. We'll find out which school that is a bit for now. It's well the turn of Sullivan to get Richard Hale started on their attack again. They could pass it along one more and go to score in the corner, the but the they've knocked it on in the tackle. And Hewish again losing another one of their lives because that was another close scoring moment for Richard Hale. Yeah, Hewish have a let off. They just need to get their exit right now. Don't Just overplay in the 22. I want to be playing in the opposition half. Crouch! Bye! Set! Stay in two, stay in! Another strong scrum from Richard Hale's school, but it's their fault for scrummaging early. And Hewish. Tapped, they went quickly. Oh, lovely little show and go there at the breakdown by Hewish's Kieran Golding. And here comes Hill now on his opposite number, Williams, who's brought him to ground. And Hewish opting to go to that blind side. There's a bit of space if they want to try and use it desperately. Trying to stay in was Teddy Hobbs, but Hobbs is held into touch. And another Hewish chance goes astray. It does, but take the positives from that really, really good continuity, keeping the ball alive. They, sure they intended to come down that short side, there, just that extra pass. Black, let's go! Unfortunately, he had a couple of players on him, but that, that was really good Next play. Time, I think encouraging should give them confidence. It was the joint effort of Finn Bloomer and Luke Griffiths that eventually got Hewish is Teddy Hobbs into touch. Come backwards. Good competition. And there is Griffiths again getting involved to make sure his side keep possession. So that way. Green going forward. That was competition, but Green's got more of that. Greener in possession. It's just scrum, fellas. Very clever by Rowan Curry there. He got in amongst it. And what he did, he managed to sort of trap him in, in the floor as well. So, so Luke Griffiths got trapped Griffiths there, couldn't play, the present the ball you back. You do know so that's why I gave a free kick. Yeah, yeah, going yeah. forward so to get the scrum. Okay. They're still pouring in on that far side, Rocky. They, they haven't have stopped for the last them? five okay. minutes. We must have a good few hundred students that have suddenly decided to, uh, to turn up and join us for today. You can see them all in their fancy Bye. dress to go along with it. Great to see. Loads of signs. <laughs> It's the Uppingham side, School contingent needs to be safe. that Keep I'm seeing in uh, sort your binds and then in that far side of the okay. stadium. They're, they're taking over that main stand. They are, yeah. and I can still see a load of heads coming off the buses, so yeah, we could be in for a full side. Goodness Crap. me, Uppingham School obviously coming up next today. They're in the play Bye. final that follows this bowl final. Set! Wait for the ball. And there's Ollie Guest on your Ball's screen gone. now, feeding that scrum. Guest takes it from the base himself, and it's in with his fly half. Zeki Harston looks to his captain, Sandre. Decided to keep it himself. It's turned out to be the wrong decision, 
because Hewish have conceded the penalty. On, 13 on his feet. Great technique. Well done. Tom Rutter with that yeah. jackal. Been working really hard both sides of the ball. Watching, watching. Oh, and despite the best efforts of Ollie Dad from Richard Hewish, that's gone out yes, about 10 win. metres out from the Hewish try line. And Hale again with another really, really well, dangerous line out position. We need to speed it up, fellas. Next time's a free kick. Let's take a look at the penalty itself, well, Rocky. Well, and uh, Richard Hale getting over the top. As you say, Tom Rutter, great body height and position and great strength over the ball. Yeah, and you had Troy Sullivan make the tackle really easy then for him to get over Tommy. Rutter to get over, get his hands on. Well, there's a, a free kick error there by Richard seconds. Hale, not throwing when the arm movement starts. It's, it's a thing in rugby, isn't yeah, it, Rocky? You can't kick. hesitate when you go for the throw as a hooker. You have to just go from behind the head, fully extended to the ball being yeah, thrown you in. You can't dummy it, you can't double pump. And there's a mistake in the backfield by Richard Hale's fullback Morgan Jackson. And the noise already from that far side is starting to play havoc with the proceedings on the pitch because you could say that was a big factor in him dropping the ball. Yeah, indeed, and great attacking position for Hewish here. Got to make it count now, lads. Just made a substitute, quite a big one. Fly half coming off, Zeki Harston. Well, Haas has had a really Smart good game so far, but he will Crouch. leave. He's had a he has had a great fixture. He's made a lot of really nice, incisive Bye. runs, but he will play no further part in this Six. final. Let's go! Let's go nine. Let's go. Nice scrum from both sides there. Guest sends it out Say to again. his captain Gray, and that's been intercepted Three. by Richard Hale. They are yeah, in possession on that far side. Sullivan now standing over at nine. Good carry there from the try scorer Penalty Saunders. Advantage. And there's the captain Williams brought down no, right in the seven. middle of the Hold field. On. Sullivan tips that on to Griffiths, wrestling his way through the first Bye. tackle. Okay. And there's an advantage there for another high tackle. I think the advantageous one's further off, isn't it? Well, Nicklin thought about... No, 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 no. ...kicking to the other side of the pitch. We decided okay, against it, and they had another advantage anyway for offside. you're offside at your own scrum. The whole back line was offside at your own scrum. Do you notice every time there's a penalty, who goes yeah. and gets the ball? Tate Williams looking for that quick tap 16, every that time. High, keep that. He just knows to keep that tempo, putting the pressure on, but potentially getting an extra 10 if they, uh, if they infringe. You've got to be looking at him for player of the match, potentially, Rocky, surely? Yeah, he's had a really good game, keeping his team working hard. Here you go. Been impressed with Troy Sullivan as well, getting around Stay the there. park. Stay there. Luke Griffiths, Tate, really good. Better, thank you. Good little line-out set there from Richard Hale, but they lose the ball when trying to hand that back. Sullivan runs through the middle. Sullivan has broken through. Mighty break to the line. He's brought down five metres shy. Griffiths picks up and continues the carry forwards. Here come Richard Hale. Short, no hand. Short of the line on that occasion. Use it. They could still score here, but they've knocked it on. Why did they? They should have just given it to a big lad just to dive over. We've, he's already scored his try, Joe Saunders. I'd have given it to him. Really Wrong low take. driving position. Yeah. Just so add risk with the, the extra passes line, you get. Your You're so, so right. We've already seen him score from piece. exactly that position, yeah. pretty much. Wait, just just picking out. up from the base, driving low, driving Green hard, scrum. not giving up. And they scored there, so why didn't they do it again? Hindsight's a wonderful thing, though, Rocky. Crouch. It is, but they have got a really strong scrum, so you'd expect the pressure to Bye. be applied here by Hale. Set! Wait there, wait for the ball. A good hook back flat. there from Hewish's front row and a nice initial carry from Nathan Golding will get Hewish started. Lost. Well done, Captain, well done. On their drive away from Still in. Nine their green, let's use it. Stay there. Stay there. Good. 
Guest puts the kick in. It's got a lot of height, not a lot of distance, though, so this is Jump still green tricky for Richard Jewish. Hale have claimed it as well, thanks to James Hunter. And Sullivan goes to this blind side now. Great carry and strength from Ewan Lewis. Tackle! Let him move. It's still alive here foot, for Richard Hale and back Joe Saunders. Green. Hold the back foot. Use the line, yeah, well done. Use it, Black. Hunter carries. Doesn't gain much distance, but he gets around the corner. They've got possession still. Lovely handoff and show and go there from Archie Nicklin. We've got a bit of a. No, don't go in. Eight, get out. We've got a bit of an argy bargy. Get out. Referee's right in the melee as well. We'll just take a listen in because obviously we don't want to see any more of this in the game. We want to see rugby, not wrestling. I'd go elsewhere if I wanted that. Okay. Yeah. Come on a bit closer. Have you calmed down a bit? Hang on. Answer the question. I asked you if you calm down. Do you need to be substituted to calm down further? Are you sure? Okay. So it's a penalty against you for not rolling away. They are seeing what's happened. There's no offences that we've seen, so we'll stick with the original penalty. You calm yourselves down, get back to playing rugby, or you will have to go off one way or another. Feel free to shake hands if you want. We'll come back for the first penalty, which is seven not rolling. That is excellent refereeing. It's really fantastic. Like that. De escalated the situation. It'd be a great prison officer, wouldn't he, as well? <laughs> I don't know, we'll have to find out his day job after this we match, will. won't we? We're praising this referee a lot in the fixture. I would love someone to hand me a sheet with his name on it, actually, because he does need the recognition that he deserves. As you say, Rocky, completely diffusing the situation. Scrum yeah, scrum call. And a scrum call by Richard Hale. Five metres out from the Hewish line. I, I think you could say if they score from here, Rocky, that on, is fellas. the game well and truly oh. wrapped up. Yeah, and great shout. And we see him. Finn Bloomer is absolutely pumped. I can imagine he's going to have a, a bit of a pop here. Crouch! Bye! Set! Well, here comes Richard down, Hale. Nice Sullivan now with the ball, sends it into the backfield. Here we go now. Lovely little show and go. The time under the sticks for you and Lewis. A moment of magic from the replacement. Sends Richard Hale further into the lead and ever closer to clinching the trophy. Beautiful fairy tale finish for Lewis there. I can't. I don't think he could believe his luck as he skipped his way through. He was just hiding just on the short side, just here. came out of the shadows. And there he was, the path sort of opened up for him. Great little step through. So it goes out to the fly yeah, half. He just steps off his left foot gone. and a clear run and a dive. 12 gone. Straight through the sticks, what a finish. He fooled me as well. He looked like he was going to send that pass on one more, but he kept it in hand. And he trusted his footwork and his pace. And what a score for Richard Hale, and the extras added as well. Seven more points to the good, and off go Richard Hale. Time it, lads. Time it, please. We just got another look at the try from you and Lewis, and that is. A special try in his career, Rocky, because he'll remember that for a long time, especially if they go on to win the game from here. Yeah, that's going to be in his memory books, and he'll be dining on out on that. Absolutely brilliant try. Mark, fellas. We've just had the kickoff, and Hewish had an opportunity to get, to get the ball bound back. It was a cruel bounce. Hewish went up for it, but then it just got knocked on. But they've got better field position than they had. Crouch! Well, let's see what happens now, because the last Bye. thing we'll do is take your foot off the gas and all of a sudden you let the opposition Set. in and we can end up with a very Wait dramatic finish. Well, there goes Sullivan. Blindside pick from the scrum okay. half. Yep. And Saunders now starts to carry forward. He's made a good few metres. Stay there. But Sullivan decides that that's the end of that. It's out in the back line, but that's a very wayward pass. And Lewis has to try and hack it forwards. Gray's tidied it up nicely for Hewish. And it could be on on the far side of the pitch. 
Great initiative to keep it alive from Oliver Shanley. Francis knock on. And Williams has managed to collect a spilled ball. And Archie Nicklin defuses the situation by sending it back down the other end of the pitch. That's bounced forward, pass was backwards. You can hear the explanation for the referee. The pass was backward, the ball bounced forward, so it's still fine from Richard Hewish. They're back Mr. to a similar ball. place They're to where the they started. Big carry there from Kieran Hill. The open side the has not stopped fellas. since minute one. I'm a big fan. He is getting his hands on the ball, working really hard. The offloading game great, but also very, very good in contact no as well. His contact yards should be up there. Great work there from Sam Gray. One offload after the yeah. other. Went through two tackles there. There go. 15. And he went to stand in at first receiver. Yeah, he's gone forward off his foot, and that's mate. another one that's gone loose from Richard Hewish and another threatening attack that's just over for Take them. Him back. Yeah, Bloomer front. carried hard, got Hold. the little roll, got momentum, okay. got his team on the front foot so they were able to exit with a kick. Watching, watching. Well, Rocky, we've still got. Uh, about 20 minutes left until the end of the game. Oh, here's a quick Language. look at that lovely individual work from Gray. Got one offload away from a tackle, straight back into it, tackled again, but offloaded from the floor once more. He is a captain leading by example at the moment, Sam Gray. He is, he's working really hard. A beautiful line there from Marley Mehmet as well. Just that out to end hard running lines. Okay, oh, and that's a bit Advantage. of a miss throw, but it's worked out nicely for Ed Taylor. Advantage over. And Advantage. again, a lovely pick and go from Jared Mossman. And still going. Go Richard Hewish back into the hill. Back into the hill. Half, and it's, well I thought it was going to be a turnover there from Joe Saunders. Did. I'd have liked to see them use the ball a bit quicker. Oh, oh. Get that line break. They've slowed it right down. And again. Using nine. Gray though on the blind side sends that on all oh, good hands there for the replacement Mehmet. I think his shoulders out. Relax, yeah, 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 his shoulders out. A bit and we've got a big injury here. Time's off. So the time Time's is off. off. The referee is telling us we're going to take a long stoppage. I'm not sure exactly who's down on the floor. I don't want to take a replay of it or another look at it because it's probably a, a collision we don't want to see. But this is another look at the carry from Jared Mossman and the offload to Ollie Guest. I don't think you could quite believe he suddenly found himself in space, Rocky. Yeah, and he just stepped off his foot and went went through, and it was like, oh, I'm through. Brilliant. I think it's just hit the ground. I think. Oh, and another big Paul, substitution for Richard Hale. Joe Saunders has left the field of play, Rocky. I'm not sure they'll want to lose him. I know they're ahead. They've still got a good 20 minutes left to play. Maybe they'll bring him back on. The time's up, there's no Let him rush. get a bit of energy. Take all the time you need, okay? A couple of Harry Bows, a Lucas Aid, and they'll be good as gold. Yeah, I feel I need that. Sat here, so <laughs> you know, especially if I'm, I'll go come off, the, come off the pitch or want to get refueled. But you know, he's somebody you can put back on. Is a big physical presence, and he's certainly made an impact, hasn't he? It's the try scorer that's down. It's you and Lewis. That's not the way that he wanted his his appearance to end. But it's great to see that the referee straight away picked up on what had happened. I'll let him have a swear. And it's great to see that he is up on his feet and coming That's off the field of play. That's a story he'll continue to tell for a long time, I think. Scored possibly the best try of the <laughs> afternoon and uh, has a battle wound to go with it. It does, and he will remember it. But he's sort of coming off with a grimace safety, smile. I think he's happy with his try, but certainly green probably struggle. in a bit of bit of pain but he's gone inside so hopefully he'll get looked after and we wish Green, him a really speedy well recovery pat on the back okay. for an Stop incredible try we do indeed you and Lewis you've had a fantastic game since coming on to this pitch as I've said already a okay, great well try Time off. and for any of his teachers listening if his right arm is his writing arm I think he's going to need a, a few weeks off homework as well yeah probably right Bind. there He's earned it for sure. Here we go. Richard Set. Hale now. Hold, hold, Black, hold. Having lost one of their try scorers, are still ahead. And Hewish will win the penalty at the scrum. We've shifted left and it's we've gone too forward. too eager in that Black. scrum. Weren't they, Hale? 
just oh, wheeling around. Isn't it? Is it difficult, Rocky, in that front row though, when you've you've got the drive, you've got the dominance really at scrum time, and it just wheels around? Is it something you can really control, or does it just come from being I too dominant? I tell you what. There's sometimes I've almost had to fight my second row because they're pushing so hard. And you've got that initial shunt, you start to go, but then you can't go round the corner, so you have to like almost battle against them. And you're like, ease off, ease off, because you know, if you go too far, you're going to give that back penalty. It, 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 it is hard, and you have to have those mini chats just before the scrum. Green, let's go! Make sure. Your time. Well, the wind's really picked up here at the Stone X Stadium. So, I don't think Hewish are going to go long. They do indeed go short, and a lovely little tip onto Hill. Almost caught the Richard Hale score off guard, and now they'll build a very nice attack. Sticking on this blind side with Hill. Thought about the pass, he keeps it in hand though. No hands, no, off feet. Well done, well released. Mossman standing over him, and the ball's gone out one more to Rowan Curry, the second rower, who's also had a blinding game. Show and go from Guest. Keep Inches moving, away moving. from the line now, Richard oh, Hewish, they could score here. Tackle short! No hands. Again, back. called short. Hill's gone digging, Hill's gone diving, and Hill's gone scoring! Get this down, he's down. Kieran Hill has got Richard Hewish, their second try, and Rocky Clark is the comeback on. 15. Well, Keep one of them never close. say never. We've seen, seen it done before. We've seen it through the uh, Six Nations. But, you know, this guy, Hill, just deserves this yeah, try. He's win. worked so hard all day. Didn't particularly have to work hard to score the try, but everyone counts. Nice little break here from the nine. Little dummy yeah. goes through. I've got Ollie Guest has been threatening with those snipes all day. It's it Rowan Curry that thought that he was the one to score, but just short. And then Kieran Hill comes in. Oh, Rocky, what a try to score. Yeah, really needed. Oh, cool, that was close. Well, right, thanks to that charge Scoring down effort by the Richard Hale School. No extras for Hewish. So they trail by 14 points in this game. So just to bear that in mind, two converted tries and they score level. And we could be on for some additional play here at the Stone X Stadium. Kick. <laughs> wow, what a kick off by Richard oh, Hales, side. Archie oh, Nicklin. Stay! Good, he's touched that, he's touched that. I think Owen Farrell will be proud of that kick. I think the last time we saw a kick like that at the Stone was probably out, Owen out. Farrell or Zoe Harrison. Sublime take from Rowan Curry, he's been busy getting through lots of work. It's the try scorer back on the ball. That was great, his captain linking up with Kieran Hill and an uncharacteristic mistake from Rowan Curry, the second rower, who up until that point had a flawless game for the Hewish School, but now Hale on the counter on the far side and breaking away come Richard Hale, but tackled just inside the 22 is Oliver Shanley. And that's right in front of the large crowd that's now formed on that far side of the pitch. The yeah, it got Time the crowd the excited. It was a fantastic carry One, down that blind side. And he, just as he got tackled on that last ditch cover tackle, he knocked it forward. Well, Richard Hewish have moved a few people around. Kieran Hill's come in from the back line to stand at, at scrum half. Oh, that's a wayward throw though, Williams despite being upended has claimed the ball back for his Richard Hale side and that's a great carry from James Hunter, look at him go! It's like a spinning top Tackle! just bouncing from person to person, fabulous carry. They've gone to that blind side still and Finn Bloomer makes another huge carry. That is out. More big work from the Richard Hale pack and Tommy Day. And a penalty the floor first, then back for the, the Richard floor. Hale team. Yeah, Williams gone, gone. goes quick though, doesn't want to hang around. Williams, Tackle, release. two metres out now, Richard Hale. Use it! And a carry from the loose Tackle. head, Whitaker. No room for him to score. Around the corner goes Bloomer. Held up, no And he's held up over the held line. Up, line oh, it's a shame for Bloomer, he's worked ball, so well. hard. He's Ball carrying ability, just running into that high collision traffic. 
He has got so many hard yards. Shame for him, but another let off for Hewish. They've got to boot it, but oh. Well, when that goal line dropout is charged down. So a messy restart here for Richard Hewish. It might work for them, though. Mehmet almost knocked it on, regathered his own knock on. So it wasn't a knock on. And then kicked it down the field. Good work from the 16. 20's coming off. Yeah, he's Green impressed me. Here. Just waiting Running for a really off. good come hard off, lines, got through a lot of work. Well, well, threat on the ball, quite steppy. Big future for him. Well, here's a, a okay, look at go. the charge down. God, that's difficult because you had a ginormous second rower in front of you. How do you kick over them? That's the question. Yeah, I was about to say, a massive boot is needed here. <laughs> and you get the big hands of the second row getting in the way. That was an easy Tackle. line out for Richard Don't Hale, compete. keeping well it done, simple. Paul. They've learned from their mistakes earlier on in this game. Williams now cutting back inside. No seven. Richard Hale starting to build something with Gawthorne. All on. Kick going up but not very far from Nicklin, so that'll be highly way. contestable and Off Hewish will come away with it. Gray <laughs> showing go from Mossman as well. Fooled absolutely everyone. Hewish coming down this blind side now, they do have numbers. Gray on the ball. Ball's out. But that ball has bobbled out the ruck again and it's over. For Richard yeah, Hewish. Counter ruck's good. Or is it? The counter ruck was good. And hands on the floor mean they have the penalty. 16. Played it on the, off the ground. It was Gawthorne being good. punished, playing it on the floor. Rocky, you just can't do stuff like that in a cup final like this. Yeah, it will be, mate. No, you can't. You can't give away those silly penalties, seven, even if you're up. Stop, please. And 17. And 17 green sub, please. Wow, Just big there, substitution here there. from Richard Hewish. They've taken Kieran Hill off the try scorer and indeed one of the talisman of this team. It's a risky move, but it could pay off because they are chasing two tries from this game still. That's what they Played need it. to draw level. Oh, he's done well. He's caught that between his legs. He's managed to get it back. That transfer off the line out. Uh, play off, play off. Flying footwork from the tight head, Jan Davison. But then he's held Seven, on the floor. Please hold on. So Hale win the penalty. Listen okay. to that noise on the far side of the stadium. I cannot wait for this plate match that follows the bowl final. Yeah, this is going to be huge. Uh, an audience really loud. It's going to be a big difference, really hype up their team. It's outside and it's intimidating to play against as well. Green edge of the paint, please. Do you want them now? Well, we're in the final 10 minutes, well and truly, of this game. Uh, Rocky, what a game it has been as well. Who are your nominations at the moment for player of the match? It's going to be a close call, surely. Yeah, it will do. I, you know, I'm thinking Troy Sullivan's had a great game. Tom Russ got through some great work. Four back round, four! Uh, Finn Take Bloomer, tight head, and his counterpart, Whitaker as well. Griffiths, Tate, oh, just so many. So many to consider for a player right of the away. match, and here come Richard Hale again. Big hit going in on their 10, Archie Nicklin though. He said packing by the captain, Gray of Hewish, and now a fierce contest to try and win the ball back. The Greens have got it. Here come Richard Hewish. Lovely handling there to Freddie Mundell. And now the captain, Sam Gray, goes once more. Penalty for Hewish. They've got to use it quickly. And Ollie Guest taps and goes on his own. He can't get too isolated. Yeah, yeah, off his boot. Play. Mossman tidies that one up. Use it, 12. From going out wildly. Here they go. Lovely run again from Mundell. He's getting stuck in from the get go here. Sam Gray wrestling through the first tackle. tackle. Williams over the top. Take Williams. It He's turned it over. Such an important intervention there from Williams. Okay, be careful, far side. 
Careful. Back. And a really good clearance kick there from Archie Nicklin on his own line. Richard Kewish's Mehmet has run right off the pitch to claim that ball as quickly as he can. Uh, <laughs> We've got a stray boot that needs to be reclaimed as well. So we'll take a look at the replay again Free from Tate Williams. Off. Rocky, that's off. fantastic work from the open side. You'll be on the edge of this Yeah, he's, he's been oh, everywhere, really lively, just a, a nose at the breakdown, really hard to play against, quick tapping everything, carrying really well. Got over that ball so well. Yes, if it's going to go now, yeah, otherwise just hold it. Okay, we're up. Edge of the paint. Richard Hewis trying a lot of movement there at line out, and it makes it a bit easier for Hale to take the ball. Tate Williams has got some gas on him, and he's going to use it to get the ball to the outside of the pitch. No hands, player on side. Tate Williams has had a phenomenal game, Rocky, and I did not know he had that pace in him. He's Use got it. huge gas, and you know, normally you tell people off for running sideways, but he found a little edge, got that offload away, he got an exit 13, well 30 well done, metres well out. Done. Fair play to the lad, he's got everything, hasn't he? He must have eaten his wheat of for breakfast, that's again. for sure. But he's sent packing, though, gone yeah. backwards. No hands now, Green, on feet! Hewish really playing for pride at this stage as the minutes continue to count down and that gap begins to seem even larger. Good feet there from Morgan Jackson as well. Lost now, Green. That one a bit of a stray pass to Bloomer, but it doesn't matter. The tight head is leaping over players. 20 offside. And Hale get another penalty. Go. Just this, it seems like a quite a complete performance, doesn't side. it? From from Hale, they've they're getting Into their the forwards working Watch really it. hard, high tempo, just being able to just keep turning the screw, aren't they? And when you've got your front row carrying so well, your back row working hard, your centres, everybody wing scoring tries for fun, like such a complete picture. Well, let's have a look if we can at that amazing run by Tate Williams. Here it is on the screen. So the initial steal from the line out scooped up by him. Goodness me. Head down, absolutely gunning for it. He should have just pinned his ears back and tried to run the length of the field. He probably would have got in. Yeah, that was oh! real pace. Leave me around my side. That's one splack. Scrum hat's fine. Well, Hewish had done really well in defence there to stop Richard yeah, Hale yeah, yeah, yeah. marching that mall drive forwards. Are you alright? Time's off. Just look after number three's thumb, please. Oh, we've just got a bit of concern here for Finn Bloomer. Quick word on him, Rocky. His performance today as well. Got me talking about individuals that have really impressed. He's definitely on the shortlist for player of the match because he's had an exemplar game as a tight head. Yeah, he's carried so hard. It's like a big number eight in a three shirt. He's just got such good front foot ball. You know, there's a load of players on the opposition in defence. Who do you want to give it to? Finn Bloomer just to bowl his way through, tie up defenders right. and create quick ball. I've been okay, so impressed with him. I think right. that's the name we're going to see go far. Over here then, chaps, the future is bright for English rugby. That's one thing we've certainly established from the last couple of days. Come on. And I don't think we should be surprised if we see the likes of Finn Bloomer playing on these sorts of pitches again in the near future. Of course, the next step Burn! up for these players, Rocky, from under-18s rugby Set! is the senior version of it themselves. And how did you find that transition from youth Hold rugby it, into adults? 
Well, yeah, it was it was different. It was a lot faster, and the hits were were harder. Yeah. But as I, I was a, a bigger girl back then, so it, it wasn't too bad because I was probably one of the biggest. So that Maintain was all right. Height, but, but yeah, it was a big difference for sure. And you you know you have to eat humble going. pie for Relax. the first six months, and and then uh, you work out your strengths and, and utilize those. And yeah, it, I, it's great though. I, you know, I love the transition. I'll tell you something else that is also great. Set. Ewan Lewis is off our screen at the moment, but he's reappeared on the touchline by the rest of his Richard Set. Hale team. His arm's been popped back in, he's in a sling, but he's got a smile on his face. So it's good to see that he's all right after that incident. And it's good, I guess, from the perspective of Hewish to also see them win yet another penalty and be given another chance to close the gap to Richard Hale in this game. What a tackle and chase from Sam Gray. And it's worked out nicely for Mossman here, but he spilt it in the tackle. Two knock-ons. First black. Adrian. The first knock-on came from Richard Hale. So Richard Hewish have a scrum right on the edge first by black. of the Hale 22. By Rocky, this game just provides entertainment from minute one to minute 70. Yeah, the quality of the players. That little kick over. Great work from Ollie Dads, dinking it over the top so delicately for Sam Gray to chase onto. Crouch! And again, another captain just leading by example, Rocky. Exactly what you want from the Balance, captain. please. Doing balance. all the hard yards. It's not the front row, it's from behind. Second row, get your balance. Let's go, quickly. Crouch! Well, our clock's gone dead, so now I guess it's time to Bye. find out who your player of the match is, Rocky. Tell me who it is and why. Set. Well, there, you know, there's a lot of close stay people in. to this. Um, big big shout-outs okay, to Finn Blumer, uh, James Hunter, stay Arthur close. Deacon, Troy Sullivan. But for me, it's the captain, Tate Williams, number seven, open side. He has got everywhere. There you go, no, Richard Hale's number seven and captain Tate Williams is your player of the match in this Continental Tires Schools Under 18 Bowl Final. And by the looks of things, his side have bowled Richard Hewish away, but Hewish could still have the final say in this game as we see the player of the match himself making a crucial tackle for Richard Hale. No two, no! Hugh is still going forward. Ollie Guess now. Ollie Guess going for the line now. Tackle Guess short. held Black just Black short. Black. Hugh is surely have got to go blind here. They might have an overlap if they can use it. But he's knocked it on as he's gone for the line, Rowan Curry. Maybe it got caught on a boot. It'll be so devoted with that. Right? He's had such a good game. Sure. Worked so right. hard. And well, we won't let that be the judgment of Rowan Curry's afternoon because he has also been sensational in that second row for Richard Hewish in defence, at the line out, and in the open play. Absolutely. What a partnership from those guys. Curry and Backhouse just gone through so much work. Crouch! Bye! Set. Well, Richard Hewish have won a penalty at scrum time. Surely a quick tap and go. Mossman's gone to find the ball. And it's with Davison, the tight head prop. He taps, he goes. Tackle short. He's just short of the line. Ollie Guest standing in. 22. 22. And the pass got knocked on and is knocked on so violently it's ended up going beyond the, the dead line. ball area and it will be a 22 dropout. Rocky, that is the story of Richard Hewish's afternoon. Yeah, they've done some really, really good things and then just caught by execution at that last hurdle. Okay, let's go, Ten. Let's go, please. It's a low driven kick for Sam Gray to pick up. Lovely little goose step there. The Hewish keep a hold of possession. Needs to be a bit more sympathetic with those passes, but the offloads could work out nicely for them. Hewish starting to run back into the 22 that they've come out from. Mossman now on the ball. Lovely back inside to Davison in the corner. It's time. Jan Davison has the score he's been craving all game. And it's
it might be too little too late for Richard Hewish, but if that's the game that they end on, what a score! Oh, that was sublime, really, really happy they got that try. He's worked hard all day, but it came from shifting the ball. Sympathetic passes, great little step from Hobbs, offloads to Mossman, who then gets that pass away to the big man who dives. What a finish. Great team try. Now this is a very important kick. Our clock has gone dead obviously, but if Ollie Dance can slot this conversion, it means his team will be only seven points behind. And if there's any minutes left on the referee's clock, they might look to exploit them and tie this game. But the kick has gone wayward from Dad. <laughs> And the referee blows the full-time whistle, and it means that the Continental Tires School's under-18 bowl champions are Richard Hale School, led by their player of the match and captain, Tate Williams. Rocky Clark, your thoughts? Oh, I'm just buzzing. It was such a good final. You know, Hewis just really worked so hard, and they will be devoed. But to have Hale just... Just keep turning the screw, they, they play so well, they have really high tempo, the quality of this game, just so good. Well, the full-time whistle has blown in the first game of the day. You can see what it means to the Richard Hale team having won this bowl competition now. But don't go anywhere. We're going to leave you with the images of the trophy lift and the handshakes. But coming up in just a few minutes, we have Uppingham School versus Newman College for your Continental Tires School's under-18 plate final. Don't go anywhere because you will not want to miss that. Congratulations, lads. Well done. Well done, earn that boys, well done. Well done, you earn that, well done. Cheers mate, well done. Well played three, well done. You are right? You sure? Good lad, well done. Well played mate, you earn that. You earn that, well done, thanks, well done.
Well, with five minutes to go until the Continental Tide Schools Cup Plate Final, it's time for your lineups. For Upper Union School, number one, Demir Kolomazarov. Number two, Edmund Rathaby. Number three, Henry Keach. Number four, Harry Parker. Number five, Edward Eiston. Number six, Louis Nichols. Number seven, Ned Hampton. Number eight, Charlie Ray. Number nine, Henry Lewis. Number ten, William Crossfield. Number eleven, Robert Bryan. Number twelve, and captain, Freddie Ling. Number thirteen, John Reed. Number fourteen, Guy Salisbury. And number fifteen, Ben Bowman. Your Newman College lineup for today. Number one, Callum Green. Number two, Kai Stolen. Number three, Connor Van Mill. Number four, Jack Jenner. Number five, Connor Madden. Number six, Alfie Ambrose. Number seven, Alex Ward. Number eight, Tom Fisher. Number nine, Charlie Sock. Number ten, Jake Rutherford. Number eleven, Alden Real. Number 12, Ollie Simpson. Number 13, Monty Bessie and Wilton. Number 14, Ellis Bayon. And number 15, Will Marley. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Continental Tires Schools Finals here today at the Stone Exit's Under 18's Rugby Action and we're finishing off the day with a second match and it is that Under 18's plate that's up for grabs between Uppingham School and Newman College. Well, before I get into the weather and who's going to be joining me for the game, let's take a look at the lineups, starting with Uppingham School. In that front row you've got Demir Kulnarazarov, Edward Vertigan and Henry Peach in the second row, Harry Parker, Edward Alston and Louis Nichols, Ned Caton and Charlie Ray are the nominated back row players. Henry Lewis and William Crossfield are your half-back pairing with Robert Ryan and Guy Salisbury on either wing. Charlie Reed is the outside centre and next to him is the captain on the inside. It's Freddie Ling and Ben Bowman makes up the starting 15. And here are the nominated away side, it's Newman College. And in the front row for them, you have Callum Green, Kai Dolan and Connor Van Leeuw. In the second row, Jack Jenner alongside Vice-Captain Connor Madden. And Alfie Ambrose is the captain of the side on the blind side flank. Alongside him, Alex Warren and Tom Bishop complete that pack. Charlie Soft and Jake Rutherford are the half-back pairing, with Alden Real and Ellis Bayon on either wing, respectively. Monty Petty and Wilton in the centres with Ollie Simpson. And Will Varley rounds off the team at fullback, sweeping at the rear. Well, you can see the fans in the stand. We can see them on the screens. They've got all of their signs. They are ready to go. They've got their clappers in their hands as well. They are ready to see their Uppingham school team in action. And I must say, Rocky Clark, they are the ones who have brought the force. Just look at the sheer number of them on that far side of this Stone X pitch. You know in particular how special it is to have fans behind you at this stadium. Yeah, it's absolutely massive and having them be so vocal as well and they fought their signs, you know, that's just going to give them that extra lift and it's intimidating to play against as well when, you know, you've got the crowd so loud, it's hard to hear the line-out calls as well, so you can expect it to be tough for the opposition. You can see there are Continental Tyres flags blowing violently in the wind and there goes the noise from the fans. The players are obviously in that tunnel, waiting, raring to get going. The excitement is palpable. The adrenaline will be coursing through their veins. And what a way it would be to round off the academic rugby season by claiming that some of England rugby's top pieces of silverware. Not many teams get to go to finals like this, and even fewer teams get to come away victorious. Who's it going to be? Well, 70 minutes of rugby action separate us from finding out exactly the answer to that question. And Rocky Clark, I know among all others, you are probably the most excited ahead of this. Absolutely. We've seen some brilliant rugby in the previous match and yesterday. So look at this, the atmosphere as they run out. 
There you go, Uppingham on your left hand side in that white kick, Newman College in the red and black. Just listen to the noise. Well, there you go, Uppingham School ready for the encounter with Newman College. The noise is echoing around the Stonex here in North London. The tension is starting to build. It feels like a home fixture for Uppingham School despite being at a neutral venue. And Newman College will be the challengers against them. Uppingham will kick off with William Crossfield, their fly half, as he steps up to the middle. And there, you could say, is a lot of pressure on the Uppingham, on the Uppingham side because they are the ones with all the fans and all the expectations to go with it. Newman College are here to spoil the party. And what a feat that would be to achieve. And here we go. We are underway here in the Continental Tyres Schools under 18 plate final. And Uppingham have stolen it from the kickoff. But they have lost the ball on at the ruck. Rocky, a really positive start from Uppingham and then a little mistake ruining it, sadly. Yeah, you can see they're pumped. They're coming out the blocks. They want to get their hands on the ball early. Maybe just a little bit too eager. But this first scrum will be interesting. So both line up, eyeball each other as they're about to pack down those two front rows. Talk to me about how important these first scrums are. Sorry, Rocky. Yeah, you just have to work out your opposite number. And sometimes they can be a little bit messy, but you've got to try and paint a good picture in the referee's eyes but also try and get one over on your opposite number. Great scrum. Brilliant first scrum from Newman College. They overloaded that open side channel and they are going to exploit it too with Ollie Simpson carrying. Attacking towards the Uppingham fans, that'll be by no means an easy task. Well, now they switch the play up. There is a bit of space if they want to use it. Oh, that was going to be good hands there from Will Varley. But unfortunately, the offload to his winger, Ellis Bayon, was knocked on. And Uppingham attacking from deep here. Bowman on the ball, carrying to the line. Offloading in the collision as well. Uppingham have got a chance here. Robert Ryan, lovely little shimmy. And gets his side over the gain line. Still they go to that blind side. Uppingham really building something special here inside the 22 for the first time in this game. Out in the backfield, lots of lovely long passes. Charlie Reed coming through, taking it up to the line. Offloading from the floor as well. It's now with Salisbury. Guy Salisbury. He's done so well to stay in play there. And there goes Louis Nichols. Good carry there from Harry Parker, the towering second rower. And Uppingham really attacking with a lot of menace and pace now. Here comes the open side, Ned Caton. And they go to the blind again with Bowman. Well, Newman have been able to slow that ball down and will nicely probably slow down that attack as well. At the moment, they're really resisting Uppingham very nicely, but here they come now. Oh, big tackle going in on Ned Caton. And Rocky, this first look at the Newman defence is fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're going well, but they are being pushed back. They're starting to get a little bit short now. Massive hit going in there, though. Huge hit. Huge hit from the front row of Newman College, but now Effingham School again favouring that blindside channel. More big collisions out of the ruck means that Newman have stolen the ball after Uppingham knocked it on.
But Uppingham have got a scrum five metres out. Rocky, that was such a great defensive set from Newman College. So good. They stayed in their line. They stayed with their shape. They got some really good lines. A couple of massive hits going in. And you can see Uppingham's attack. They're looking to go out the back, going wide. They're getting some real speed on these passes, width on these passes. They're going from edge to edge, using the forwards really well on those tight balls, but making sure that they're recycling in lots of phases. But you've got to take your hat off to Newman College. They were relentless in their defensive effort. Well, it's interesting to note as well that Uppingham have set very far back from this scrum. That is if they can get the ball back cleanly. And we'll just go for a simple reset here. Rocky, at this stage, you're still weighing up each other as a forwards pack, aren't you? Exactly right, yeah. It was, it was a pretty good scrum from Newman College earlier. And, you know, you just want to want to get one over on your opposite number just let them know it's going to be a tough day at the office and there's a lot of dark arts going in that front row you've just got to make sure you've got that back five really buying in it's a huge opportunity for Uppingham here but as you said Uppingham is so deep in their attack Well, it's another really strong shove from Newman College. I wouldn't be surprised if they turned possession over. And indeed, they have Uppingham College, Uppingham School, sorry, setting for a defensive effort after Newman College stole the ball from them at the scrum. And there's a clearance kick from Charlie Soff. Oh, and despite the best efforts of the Uppingham fullback, Ben Bowman is gone out of play into touch. Got to take your hat off to that front row from Newman College there. Green, Dolan and Van Leel. What an effort. They had a couple of the Uppingham players literally up in the air. They got their wings. You've got to make sure you're keeping them on the floor. But sometimes, because the second row are pushing so hard, there's nowhere else for you to go. That was a huge scrum and a massive let off for Newman. Well, that wasn't straight at the line out. So it's an easy handover from Newman College to Uppingham School. They've opted for the line out. Probably a wise choice after the last scrum. Well, there is the wayward line out. And you said it in the previous game, Rocky, with this win that you can see from the flags everywhere, you don't want to overcomplicate things. No, just win it. If you've, if you've got to win it in the front, do that. Well, here come Uppingham into the midfield. Lovely little tip on run for Freddie Ling, the captain, to go through with. Quick ball now for Uppingham's Charlie Ray. Ray going right onto the touchline and out of play as well. Good defensive effort Line from Alfrey yours, Ambrose, the captain. That was such a powerful run from Ray. A real shame that he ended up in touch. I think he was riding the tackles, using his handoff going round, and just ended up getting burrowed into touch. But encouraging run for the big man well here's the run from the number eight charlie ray i guess it, it proves the point that when forwards coaches tell their forwards to start running straight they really should listen because otherwise he's then out in touch with not many yards gained tight head prop throwing him van Leeuw oh. for newman man of many tricks well, and there he is at the back of that driving mall, steering the ship. It's still going for Newman College inside Uppingham School's half now. It's not slowing down, but now it does ever so slightly, squeezing every sideways. inch of grass that they can out of this drive. Over, snipe. And that's a big first carry from Ollie Simpson. They're very flat on this blind side if they're going down. Van Leel. Vantage penalty, number 12 above the sternum. And that's a penalty conceded by Uppingham on the tackle of Van Leeuw. And there's some really nice rugby being played by Newman College. Here's Van Leeuw again. They've still got that penalty advantage, Newman College. No advantage, you're good on the ball. Some great work rate from Madden. Van Leeuw getting on the ball the loads. Sternum. These forwards are here to play, they're physical. And you, still, you yeah, saw no that. Worries. More drive. That was like a train coming through. They made like nearly 30 metres on it. 
Well, here is a replay of that Van Leeuw drive. Just look at him go. It's like he's pushing a shopping trolley, isn't it? It's like, do do do. He's got <laughs> like Vaffingham players hanging off him. Look more like he's going for a walk around Tesco's than uh, a drive up the Stone X pitch. Oh, other supermarkets are available, of course. Of course. Line is yours, okay? Six. And Newman College is having a discussion here in the back line about what sort of move they want to play. So Rutherford and Simpson. Just starting to talk to each other about what they could do off the back of this. I think they're going to keep him in the forwards, Rocky. Well, if anything was to go by the last mall, they probably should. Well, and they do indeed keep it in the mall, but it's brought down. But it doesn't matter because they're breaking away with it with Dolan. Dolan driving towards the line. Five metres out now, Newman College, and going and scoring! Alex Wan, out of nowhere, picks the loose ball and drives in for the first try of the game and it's advantage Newman College. Wow, where, what we really saw there, here, brilliant uh, break from Dolan, went sure on his own but that leg drive, that intent to get to through, just created such yes. quick ball yeah, and then yeah. Warren to snipe his way through as well, what an absolute power move from Newman College. This forward pack is really putting it up against Uppingham. Well, I tell you what, that's one way to silence the Uppingham school fans. Let's no, hope they no. find their mojo again later. Well, the referee had to shout no, no to the players because they went too early on the charge down. You could almost say that that put off Jake Rutherford on his kick, but never mind. They're still five points up and one try to the good as well. So, advantage Newman College in this Continental Tires schools under 18 plate final. Here's another replay of, of the try. Alex Warren, just a machine driving through the middle, Rocky. Yeah, and he's gone straight through. There wasn't particularly much defence in through the rock, and there was that space. Very clever move, tactical move to go through. Oh, and here come Newman again. Tom Bishop on a lovely inside tip. And there goes the try scorer. But Alex Warren isn't allowed to go through on that occasion. Newman College have clearly identified they've got a bit of forward pack dominance. So they want to use it right from the get-go here. There's some hands going in that rock, I tell you. Van Leeuw bounces off the first tackle. He goes straight through the defensive line. That's not the last time we'll see the tight head carry in this game. And use, please. Take him back. And silence falls upon Stone X as Charlie Soft's kick goes high, taken confidently by Ben Bowman. Bowman has some space and an overlap if he wants to use it. It's a loose pass, but it's gone backwards, so he won't go back for a knock on. It's then Uppingham attacking out their own half now, brilliantly with Robert Ryan. Henry Peach. Carrying forward, urged on by the fans in the stand. This is surely going to be a cross-field kick, and it is. It's gone over the head of Will Varley of Newman College, but he's got some fancy feet to make his way past the defenders. He might go all the way through the middle. But Varley's brought down their space on the blind side for Newman College if they want to use it, and they will surely a pass to the inside. Had to go there from Jake Rutherford. He had Alice Bay on with him, Rutherford, but elected not to use his winger. That's a costly error, Rocky. Yeah, he was free, wasn't he, there? Still they drive, though, Newman College. How they have flipped the complexion of the last five minutes, getting within five metres now of Uppingham's try line. And there he is again, the try scorer, Alex Warren. But there goes Newman's chances of scoring as Uppingham win a vital penalty. Seven black. Key oh, penalty no. to win there, right on their line. Could have been really costly. Once you go a couple of tries down, that's a really hard mountain to climb, so vital. 
Just taking the pressure off. Not much distance on that kick, it's no, but as we said short. in the first game again as well, it's better in those situations just to get the ball out safely than risk too much distance. And here is the penalty won by Uppingham. Holding on the floor there from Alex Warren. Just stay in, nine, just stay in 15. Seven. That's a nice, easy line-out win for Charlie Ray Take out the front. Back. Uppingham playing out from their own line. This is lovely work from the boys in white. This on that far wing with Robert Ryan again. Well out of the 22 no now, Uppingham are still desperately attacking forward. That's a lovely kick in behind as well. If they can get a good chase on it, it could be very dangerous. And it is, thanks to the effort of Guy Salisbury. And Newman College are scrambling here, thanks to the work of Salisbury. Safe ball, though, for the red and black. Van Leel, once again, not brought down. He's got three people Aussie. hanging off him every time. Well, and there's the kick. Back pipes. <laughs> I can. It's almost. Yeah. Are we? Uh, are we in Edinburgh all of a sudden? Oh, I thought we'd gone back to Murrayfield. <laughs> Brilliant. Even more of an atmosphere. Hands on the floor. 14 black playing the ball. By the Newman floor. College. It's Ellis Bayon that is punished by the referee. And I'm desperately looking into that stand, Rocky, as you've rightly pointed out. There's some bagpipes somewhere, or just a very impressive speaker someone's brought in. There they are on your screen. You can see them. They were bagpiping away. Don't put it down, boys. Keep that going throughout the game. There was a player on the wrong side. Number six was the wrong Great side. Great to hear. No, just wait for your player to roll away before you, uh, before you jack off. Not straight. So that throw wasn't straight from Edward Vertigan. So it'll be a scrum down Newman College ball. Say that again. Sorry, fellas. We're going to go with the line out again. Versus against are we, arguing it. We are going to go with the line out again. I was going to point it out because I felt like Berthkin was hard done by, but I don't want to judge our officials too much. The touch judge didn't want him to throw, but he did, and I feel like the touch judge might have intervened with that. So there they go with another chance, this time much cleaner. So here come Uffingham. Good carry there by Charlie Reed, fending his way through. And a lovely pick and snipe from Louis Nichols as well. This is really good stuff from Off Uppingham at the moment. Just need to keep the possession, keep the ball in hand, and build those phases. Be patient, Rocky. Yeah, exactly. They've done really well early on. They just needed to get over the line. Oh, another big hit coming in. That's Freddie Ling, the captain, being shown where he can sit down on the stone X pitch. Catton getting through Thank some you. work. See his blue scrum out. He's got a lot of touches on the ball already. Vital. <laughs> to Uppingham's attack. There's another big carry from Peach. And more cheers from the crowd. But Newman College have nice won the ball lads. once again. Nice and easy Penalty lads. conceded by Uppingham. Number two. And they can't on. afford to keep doing this Uppingham Rocky because they're essentially killing their own attack. Yeah, they're their own worst enemy at the moment. Just need to settle into it. Keep the discipline. Got to get the referee on side. Let's take a look at a big tackle. We've managed to find a tasty replay to look at here, Rocky. What do you make of this? Yeah, I saw it's over the other side, but really big. He's got his head in the right place. Yeah, oh, and we just came out a bit too early there before we saw the tackle going in on, on Freddie Ling. There was two big tackles, to be fair, wasn't there? Just one on the edge of them, one on the inside, but really good technique coming from Newman College here. Well, we've got a few changes here for Uppingham. It's uh, rolling subs at this level of uh, schools rugby, so 
That's not their afternoons over, those who are leaving the pitch, but those coming on have to make an immediate impact. Otherwise, they might be brought straight back off again. Yeah, watch on. You're a bit brutal, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the joy of bringing on fresh legs, is they have that energy and they have that drive, because they've been watching on from the sidelines, hungry to be involved. And I tell you what, Newman College that are hungry for red. another score, because that mall was certainly pacing forward at speed. And now it's out in the back line. Here come Newman College now. One more pass, this on the wing and a bit of space here. It is indeed, it's with Bayon. He's kept it alive really nicely there, his opposite winger. Real came across from the other side of the pitch to take it. But they concede another penalty. Extra roll on the floor. There's an extra roll on the floor from Alden Real. Number seven. Oh, that's, that's a hard one. I, I find that really difficult because you used to be able to roll and no, now you can't. Seven, just an extra roll. Gave your, your support players time to get there. And that's ex you can hear it from the referee, you, you bought your support players extra time to get there and that's why it was so good when you were able to roll. Well, great communication between our officials and the teams taking part today. It always makes the games more enjoyable when you're a player actually, doesn't it? Yeah, once you know what they want, <laughs> makes it a lot easier. Oh, that's a missed throw from Uppingham. He went over the heads of everyone, and Kai Dolan has pounced on it for Newman no College. Fall, you're off your feet. Loose ball is tidied up by the captain. There he goes, Alfie Ambrose. Another stonking carry from the blind side. Get on, get on. Big hit going in from Harry Parker. Uppingham looking to match the intensity of Newman College's defence so far. And Charlie Soft thought he could get into a bit of space there, the nine. And another really good leg drive from Jack Jenner. The second rower is getting stuck in here for Newman College. Van Leel. First man on feet. And Uppingham have turned it over. They have the advantage for holding on the floor as well. And that's a really good pickup actually as well from David Sawamni. That's right on his toes, isn't it? My hamstrings would ping if I went to get that. Well, here come Uppingham, still looking to play out from their very own line now. Bowman. Bowman's cutting in field. He's seen a bit of space. Can Bowman stay on his feet? He's wrestling with all his might to not held, so he still fights forward for Uppingham. Great work from the fullback. They've certainly got some momentum now. Robert Ryan. Brought to the floor. Nuffingham fans are loving this right now, Rocky. They are, and we've got Ray coming through. He's working really hard, the big number eight. But it all comes from Ben Bowman, who's been everywhere. Such an elusive, fast runner. Asking questions, got him up to the halfway. Well, here come Uppingham. Lovely inside ball pass from the fly half cross field. No advantage. But they're going back for an advantage. Listen to that crowd. Got a penalty for not rolling just over there. Or 12 by tap over here. If that doesn't give you a lift, I don't know what will. Well, I was about to say, I know they're behind on the penalty scoreboard currently by five points, but it certainly won't feel that way when you've got a crowd like that next to you. Number 12 over the shoulder. So it's a penalty against Ollie Simpson over the shoulder tackle, which of course is a high one. And something we're trying to stamp out. That was kept in field very nicely by Ellis Bayon. And I don't think Uppingham were expecting that by any means, Rocky. Start onside, please. And no, that was really lucky. The winger was able to get up there and make that tackle. So they thought it had gone out. You had it. Lovely high Thanks clearing the kick there from Charlie Soff and a really good bit of footwork from Harry Gawthorpe. We didn't know the number 19 had that in his locker, but he's telegraphed that to the rest of the pitch now, so don't give that man a bit of space. Here goes Charlie Ray. Another brilliant carry from Uppingham's number eight, taking Newman College's defenders with him. So strong. 
Lovely little dink in behind there by Freddie Ling. Wait nine. Thought he was looking at a bit of space there, but it means the side have to restart their attack. Bowman all brought down Off hard. He's had his feet taken out from underneath him, Ben Bowman. But that's exactly what you need to do with a player like him. If you can get hold of him. <laughs> Very yeah. good point. So elusive. Take your time. No, take a knee, please. Thank you. And we've got a bit of concern here, actually, for Bowman. I did, I did wince a little bit because as he was taken so by his legs, Rocky, his head connected carrier, with an opposition's knee. And a tackle of bent at the waist. So I've got no, no foul play on field at the moment. The referee's seeing, saying he's seen nothing in the form of foul play. And the fans will clap Bowman off the field. Big player to lose at such a crucial close game but his safety is most important we wish him a speedy recovery we've got charlie reed coming on for him not bad man to replace him your scrum. no we've already seen how elusive charlie reed is in the open play if he spots a gap he's going straight through it i can tell you that much for sure I think the Uppingham School medics will just assess whether it's appropriate for Bowman to continue in this game. Obviously, as you say, Rocky, player safety and welfare is of paramount importance, especially at this level, indeed all levels of rugby in England. Just seeing running repairs to Connor Madden, who's got through What's some work. A vital player for just here, fellas. Newman College here. Big second row, working hard, yeah, carrying hard. They were going forward when we stopped the game. Keep this ball, boys. Let's go, lads. Go, boys. Big scrum. That's not what you want for Uppingham, is it? Having the scrum when they've just been upturned in a few of them. Well, here we go. Uppingham will set for the scrum right in front of their own fans, in fairness. Bind. So they could be set in a worse position, but Stay down. they'll certainly enjoy having some cheers behind Nine them. Here they go up. now from deep. Running some really nice lines, and that's a lovely bit of break from William Crossfield. Great offload as well to Gawthorpe. Gawthorpe, we want to be heading towards the corner. Throws it back inside. What a pickup! What a pickup from David Sawandney. Uppingham need to use this advantage that they've got with all the momentum and a broken defence in front of them. Looping pass out wide to Robert Ryan. Ryan cuts back in, offloads to his hooker Vertigan. Newman College on red alert right now because Uppingham are knocking on the door of their try line. James Gedney can't get to the line, but can Uppingham find a way still? They've lost it forwards on the floor. It brings the attack to an end. And Rocky Clark is the same old story for Uppingham School. You've got to feel for them. That was almost an absolute worldie of a try. And that pickup from Suwamni, like he'd already had practice because his hamstrings were stretched from uh, one of the passes earlier. How he picked that up, he was centimetres away from scoring. That's a killer blow for them to have that knock on on the other side. But hopefully they'll get the line out after a kick exit, but this scrum is going to be uncomfortable for them. Well, we're in the final 10 minutes of the first half, and that has absolutely flown by. And i tell you what, you can see from the Continental Tires flag there in the corner of your screen that the wind is blowing so hard that some of us might fly by as well if we're not too careful, Rocky. It's all right, I've got a lot of ballast, I'll be fine, but you maybe. <laughs> So Newman College right on their own line are going to play out here with Tom Bishop. 
Bishop, lovely offload. Great hands from Newman College. There is an overlap here if they want to use it. If they want to exploit that gap, the kick goes downfield though from Will Varley. Gawthorpe was there to collect it. Doesn't run running himself and sends it out into the rest of the back line for Uppingham. More good hands from the boys in white. And more great hands from the floor as well. Both sides showing really promising offloading game here, Rocky. Yeah, they're just trying to keep the ball alive. It's so hard to defend when the, the point of contact keeps moving. But look at this. They're spreading the wall, ball really wide. Ned Caton with a big fend there as he takes the ball into contact. And now a big carry from the hook of Vertigan. No eight. Peach. Peach breaking through the line. It's just lot of, lost a little bit of pace here, the uh, Uppingham attack, and that's a big tackle going in from Charlie no Soft, the scrum half for Newman College. Scrum half on a front row, wow. That was impressive. Charlie Ray's brought down. 18. And Charlie Ray's carry wins Uppingham score the penalty in front of their adoring fans. It does indeed, you can hear the crowd really getting behind their team the ideal if they got a score in this last minute of the game the well, first half sorry i don't They're think i've here. ever heard this stadium quite as loud as this the only exception really is premiership and pwr right now, matches here at the stone Neck stadium we must commend uppingham schools traveling fans rocky you can hear them singing as well we've got bagpipes we've got the choir we've got signs this has to spur them on. Well, but Newman College have disrupted that lineup. Counter attack is on here. Here goes the captain, Alfie Ambrose. Ambrose through the first tackle, through the line. Offload is good. Here go Newman College. And it's a penalty for Newman College as well. 14 white, not rolling. Guy Salisbury not rolling away at the tackle. And surely, Rocky, you send this as far down the pitch and as close to the corner as possible. There's been, there's been three really good jackal you attempts. You do, there's a, a real there. opportunity here. Could they get some more points on the board? The really, really hard for Uppingham if they yep. go in 10 or 12 nil down. About five. So we've got confirmation from the referee that we're hearing through his mic as well. We've got about five minutes left in this first half, Rocky. We've got just under that on our clock in the top left-hand corner. So five minutes to go to half-time. There's only five points in it, but Uppingham can't concede here, can they? No, we, we've seen it before. It nice Teams that just score before half-time, they've got a very high percentage chance of coming out victorious, especially if that gap is 10, 12 points. Just so it would be huge if they could stop them scoring here. Well, Newman College take Keep that one. Van Leel's going in towards the back to try and find the ball and sit in the driving seat for them all. Agreed. But the drive's still going forwards. Well, it's not anymore. Uppingham defending it really well and getting the turnover to go with it. Under his own feet. That is a huge yeah. tick for Uppingham there. Massive turnover for them. Number one replacement, number two replacement. So we're going to be losing Callum Green and Kai Dolan from one, Newman one, College no, for now. But they are replaced no, by that, Reggie that, Harris that and Stanley Bradford making their way onto the pitch now uh, for the red and black. And they must all very okay, at home actually, uh, Newman College in their red and black. That's uh, the colours of your Saracens, Rocky. They are indeed, yeah. Used to seeing the red and black on this pitch. Yeah, of course. Just gonna, hold on, fellas. We're just going to get him to do his laces. But oh, we're just having a break for some uh, laces that need tying up, Rocky. Yeah, nobody wants their laces on, Dumb. We've seen a few straight boots, haven't we, thrown around over the last <laughs> few days? Do you know what? I've not seen things thrown like that 
since the Olympic Games when people were hurling discuses away because that's, that's the sort of force they've put through those rugby boots that have been lobbed around the stone next exactly, recently. Yeah, we had a game Eight yesterday where on. somebody threw it about 30 metres off the pitch. I was, that's fair play, you should uh, maybe try out javelin. <laughs> Well, the Athletics Club are based in the uh, same area. Maybe they should get in touch. Crouch. Point. Set. So this is a big defensive set now, really, from Uppingham, despite having the ball. Wow. Well, they might be driven off it as well. Yeah, that is a penalty, though. So we've got the change of the front row come on. Front Very front strong big up. boys, but you cannot stand up with that. And we did see some of the uh, Uppingham lads get their wings again. It's horrible to be on the end of, but it was done illegally so. Well, that's another ball that might not make touch from the Uppingham penalty, and it doesn't. So Will Varley has the entire field in front of him and options outside too. And he does indeed hand that off to Ollie Simpson. Good decision. Van Leeuw shows his hands. Newman College going down this near side to us and cutting back infield is Lewis Reed. Reed spins through the tackle. There are offside lines. Big carry there from Stanley Bradford. He's met by his opposite number, Gedney. Van Leeuw. No seven, you're off your feet. And Newman College have got straight back into a dangerous position. They're meters away from scoring. He's over the line as well. Up. Pesh and Wilton is held up. Nice and easy, lads. Nice and easy. Monty Pesh and Wilton nice and will not believe what's just happened. It was such a lovely line oh, that he that. hit, but as he went through, oh, he was quite that. upright. And he kind of initially sort of bounced his opposite number, but in doing so, Don't he was he was really fire, high over it, as he went over the sort of try line. So easy for Uppingham to get underneath, but what a let off again for oh, Uppingham. The ball, they lads. need this half time to come quick. This is one of the closest half-time margins that we've seen in the entire competition, Rocky, and indeed the entirety of this week, actually, in all fixtures here at the Stonex Stadium. Yeah, what a close battle. We knew it was going to be an arm wrestle. We knew it was going to be tight. Well, Varley needs to tidy this one up for Newman College, and he's under some serious pressure right in front of the opposition fans. Touched. Now that was really, really clever by Soff. He saw the winger, came up, made the tackle. Did the box kick over. Put, just turning and applying that, that pressure. Is. Struggling to get out there, 22. Well, and Uppingham are desperately trying to drive out there, 22. We've got another high tackle infringement. So Uppingham with a penalty. And Charlie Ray taps and goes quickly. And his captain has seen a bit of space in behind there. So Freddie Ling leads the charge from his kick. That was a five on two, though. Those must be so frustrating as forwards to see as well that your backs haven't used. No, not now. There's a lot of space out there. Five on two. I'd just like to see the ball kept in hand in those situations. Well, there's a big tackle from the captain, Alfie Ambrose. Again, another one leading by example. We've seen some fantastic back rowers on display here, Rocky. We have. They've, they've been central to the success of teams, haven't they? Just carrying so hard, getting front football in those high collision areas, as well as getting the ball wide, being that extra passer to get it to the backs. And Crossfield yeah, decides that he's had enough of the attack. He puts boot to ball. But it's straight to his opposite, fly half, who makes a lovely pass on the inside to his winger, Ellis Bayon. Bayon back inside to Sof, who's brought down five metres shy from scoring. Bayon takes the ball from the base of the ruck. They could go blind here. Van Leel standing over now. Is it his turn to drive for the line? No, that's Tom on Bishop the on the ball, who's taking it off the tight head prop. And now, driving for the line, Stanley Bradford. Held up again though, Newman College. And that will be what takes us to half time. So Newman College held up twice over the line. Uppingham score, giving away penalties just as they look to score. Rocky Clark, what's your message to the trailing team at half time? They've just got to keep ball in hand and execute those opportunities. Don't kick it away when it's on. Play in the right areas, look after the ball. 
Which has come in. They're still massively in there. It's only one try, and they have been tremendous in their defensive efforts, especially there could have been a couple of tries scored, but the lads have got underneath that, so it's been held up over the line. Still all to play for. Well, at half time, it's Newman College 5, Uppingham School 0, and this Continental Tires School's under 18 bot plate final. And we'll be back momentarily. We're going to leave you with these highlights. And we'll join you again for the final 35 minutes before we decide who gets the glory.
No, you need to drive flat and not up. Well, hello everyone, welcome back for the second half of this Continental Tires Schools Under 18's plate final. Newman College about to kick off and currently with the 5 0 advantage in this game. Rocky Clark, this really could go anywhere still. Yep. It really could, and we were just talking about Tough. Newman having all the momentum, and it, half time couldn't have come soon enough for Uppingham. But they've had their chances, they just need to. Wow, they might have another one here. Well, they've got a big chance to start off this second half. This is a great break from the get go by Uppingham School. Sprinting inside the Newman College 22. This is outrageous stuff. Here goes the captain. Can he start a resurgence from the team? Gawthorpe brought down as he cut inside. And a penalty conceded by Newman College. I lost my excitement as soon as I saw someone go over the ball because Uppingham College seemed to start wham all the way up here. And then straight away, Newman have destroyed their dreams. They have, and it's about in the second half for Uppingham to just make sure they play those phases, keep the ball, cut out those mistakes. Yeah, on plenty the line. of opportunities in the 22. Got to make them count. Lots of yelling coming from the Uppingham bench of what they need them to do at this line out and I think the simple message is steal the ball which they nearly do with Charlie Ray well and Rocky that's a close call for Newman College Still, that was it was Reggie Harris who threw it in ball got interfered with and he had to had to try and dive on it first again got there but just got shoved out so they get a second bite of the cherry but the big man Charlie Ray is there putting a lot of pressure on he's not far off it well and the pressure from Charlie Ray has ended up in Uppingham stealing the ball from an overthrow so it is very much alive for the boys in white now if they can send it out here is that number eight now Charlie Ray out the back door and Newman College seems to have pounced on yeah, the loose agree. ball they have then a knock on but Uppingham have stolen it back once again. This is such a crazy game. Really good footwork around the fringes from Guy Salisbury. And Tawani has to step in as a scrum half as Henry Peets takes it on now. Crossfield. A long one more to Ling. Passing it through again and Gawthorpe. But what a counter up from Newman College incredible. and Ollie Brooks. Came in like a bowling ball. <laughs> the Newman oh, College wow. battering ram and that is going out beyond the dead ball line. So we'll come back for a scrum from where that kick was taken from. And Rocky, it's it's another really easy back. in for Newman College to just come back into the match. Yeah, I just feel that I think I'm are playing like they're really chasing the game like they're sort of three tries down they just need to settle there's plenty of time get it right don't force those one-handed offloads if, it, if it's not on just set it, it up the mark, but you must stay flat in clear the that breakdown and then play and another up, phase but once again a huge flat thank flat you to all of the um fans that have made their way down here today we've just seen more shots of them on our screen it's fantastic to see the level of support the school's rugby at this level and I think it's safe to say that the players are really providing the entertainment but just when we get to the wide shot you'll be able to see how Newman College is set up again they've completely overloaded this near open side to us and they've got no one on that blind side so Rocky is that smart or is that just telegraphing what you're going to do to your opposition I guess it just depends how confident you are. If you're overloading, you know, they, Uppingham will still keep somebody there. I think he's uh, just hid behind the scrum. But if you're confident, just means you've got extra runners to run those those short lines. If you've got five or six of them all running at the line, you know, you might not know who's getting the ball. It could be a, you know, a stroke of genius. We shall see. Everyone will be in their spot. Let's take our time. Let's get it right.
Crouch. Bind. Set. Stay high. Nine, stay it's there. a rock solid scrum between Newman and Uppingham. Tackle off the ball by 12. And there's a tackle off the ball by Uppingham. So a penalty advantage for Newman. I don't know whether they're going to need it because they're still marching Thank towards you. the Uppingham 22. <laughs> and they'll get a new penalty here actually. So they've gained a lot of meters and now their captain is taking a little bit longer to get up let's hope there's nothing too serious for Alfie Ambrose because Rocky he has been a pivotal player in the Newman effort he really has it's getting off the line big carries big tackles leading by example I think it might just be a bit of cramp so hopefully he can walk it off Got to make sure with this line out. An overthrow and an interrupted throw. This one's got to count though if they want to keep applying the pressure. Well, that's really well worked by Newman College, Ball. and they've got themselves a little drive set despite the best Down intentions of Uppingham trying to disrupt things and it's Reggie Harris that has the ball at the back, he's disappeared amongst that melee of bodies. Who knows whether the ball's going to come out or not, and it won't, and it's turned over by Uppingham. I love the dog from Uppingham, they are never given up. They saw this mall, Reggie had got caught, caught in, pulled in, and yep. then obviously when a mall collapses, if the ball's unplayable, it goes to the, to the opposition, so having that really clear disruption laying over the ball and you're allowed to has enabled them to have the set piece might not want the scrum but the referees making sure that they're not they're not pushing up so hopefully they'll have a better opportunity at winning their own ball well Jack Jenner's left the field and he might be replaced again later on but for now we've got Lewis Reed with us And let's see what happens here. Uppingham right on their own line. And we know how threatening a charge down is from the team not in possession and the sort of mistakes Set. that can carry with it for those that were in possession at the scrum. Here we go. Strong push from Newman College. Big pressure as well from the scrum half soft. Still Uppingham under immense pressure on their own line. They want to give their kicker a bit of breathing room and they might just get that with Freddie Ling. Peach carrying forward now. It was actually George Take Alderson. Step, please, Red. That you. was a great carry. Thank what yes. a way to, to get you out of trouble from your try line 12, 15 metres up the field in contact leg driving. They should get the clearance here. And there is the clearance from captain Freddie Ling and taken nicely by Will Varley. Here come Newman College. Big tackle on Jake Rutherford. And a penalty won by Uppingham as well. Easy, easy. There's a bit of a disagreement at the right time as well. The referee doing really well to control the situation too. Well, Temper's afraid it is so close. If I want to see handbags like that, I go to the next Boxing Day sale. But I don't, and that's why I'm at the Stone X watching rugby. How long have you been yeah, waiting to say that? <laughs> Thought you would enjoy it. <laughs> well, here you go. Uppingham School now isolated on his own, Robert Ryan. And that's ended up in a Newman turnover pretty much straight away in response from Ollie Simpson. That wasn't the smartest move from Uppingham School. Yeah, just getting isolated and they've got the... If you go on your own, you've got to buy time. You can't go to floor because you're just a sitting duck. Let's go. Newman College are just so good at that jackal. And Ollie Simpson over that ball. Um, I'll speak, I'll speak to them I can see the bagpipes on the far side of the pitch as well. Made their way down to the touchline. I wonder how long it will be before we hear them playing again. They are indeed going for it. They're getting the crowd jumping up and down.
great steal of the line outs from Charlie Ray for Uppingham. No doubt the bagpipes had a big part to play in that. Here come Uppingham now, big carry That's from Edward Alston. And a high tackle on him as well means that Uppingham have a penalty advantage. Henry Peach. The tight head has been relentless with the ball in hand, but that's the second movement which is illegal, but they'll go back Six for Uppingham's seven. penalty advantage, Rocky. Much, much better from Uppingham. They've got to make sure they hit touch a couple of times. They've been caught. He's made it. Hasn't made as many metres as he's liked, but this wind, we've talked about it swirling, coming across that bottom left-hand side. Line, lads, please. You're going against the grain. You've got to make sure. Well, we've got a player down for Uppingham at the moment, so we're going to have time off. And it gives us time to once again show some appreciation to Uppingham. Look at them on the screen, absolutely the going for it and making the noise. Love that. So just speak to your boys. When the whistle goes, we move away, not towards I feel like the entire school's come out for this. I wouldn't be surprised if all the teachers have turned up to Uppingham School today and gone, where on earth has everyone gone? Oh, that's right. They've gone to North London. Watch on, let's go. Water off, please. Well, a fair play to every single one of them because it's a two hour drive up from the mid, well, down from the Midlands, sorry. So they've got a long way to go back after trekking down this morning. But they're not at school, so that's a bonus <laughs> on They see their favourite team oh, playing hurts. rugby as well as Over getting out of lessons. No way, let go! Well done to the head teacher as well, letting them come out. No way, team! Well, here come Uppingham now on the attack. And reintroduced into the fold is Ben Bowman. That's great to see that the fullback has been allowed to return and join in. Henry Peach, again the tight head carries. That surely was a turnover from Ambrose. Yeah, he was on it. He just, they just managed to get rid of him. No 13, off your feet. Charlie Ray with the carry, and then it was Passion Wilton with the potential turnover. And that is what, what you hit. call a tackle. <laughs> Uppingham still trying, still going. That was a huge friend from Freddie Ling. Number eight. Good little footwork from Guy Salisbury. The 14's come into a league of his own since stepping in at scrum half. Oh. Go on, that's a hit and a half. Edward Alston really trying to get Uppingham on the front foot, Rocky. So good to see. I love this power play. I am all about route one and got a lot of time for that. Oh, that switch should have gone. Well, it might still work out for oh, Robert Ryan. Me. That was a very, very high challenge, yeah. and let's have a listen in. Um, so we've had two over the stern tackles, one by yourself, one by eight, which we're playing advantage for. It's another high tackle in quick succession, and if I don't get a change of behaviour, you may limit my options. I'll give you time to have a word. That was very, very lucky. I thought he was going to the bin. Have you spoken to your players? The referee was trying to give Alfie Ambrose the chance to talk to his team, but Ambrose seemed to just loosely pass the message on that the tackles need to be kept down, and unfortunately actions like that aren't going to get the referee on your side if it happens again, Rocky. Yeah, I think he's very lucky. I mean, he's had an incredible game, but he, he was lucky there to stay on. Uppingham. In a real dangerous position. We've not seen them somewhere like this for a while. Great take from Charlie Ray. The sack by Newman College was also good. And Tackle Van Leel is stepping in to stop any try scoring attempt from taking place. And now Harry Parker carrying forward. I think I've got to look wide here. There's a lot of this Stone X pitch they're not using at the moment. Bowman sends it on one more. Bowman's gone down there in the middle, so Uppingham are now attacking with 14 men. Winning, 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 winning. 
It looks like he's gone over on his ankle as well. He's having a, a tough day at the office, bless him. Peach, Henry Peach carrying towards the line. He doesn't want to be held up over it. And he smartly played that ball back for his teammates. Here we go. Interception though from Newman College. Oh, that's 12 lucky. Offside. Oh, and Ollie Simpson. Ball down, please. Ball down. The only reason why he was able to get his hands on that ball is because he was miles offside. Henry offside. Peach has gone quick. Let go, seven. No red. No red. They've got another advantage as the referee stuck his arm out again for Uppingham School. And you've got to think now Newman College might be punished with a player in the bin. Uppingham coming down onto this blind side now. A couple of passes could see them into score. What a great initial contact by William Crossfield. Riding the challenge well. Off goes Ned Caton. Uppingham desperately looking down that short side. Cray. Cray driving. Charlie Ray. The line. So close to scoring there. But it's still with Uppingham and Henry Peach. And he's still held up from going box. forwards. Out with the backs now. There's players outside if he wants to use them. One more pass, surely. And it might be in the corner. So one me. No advantage. No try. No score. And great defence from Newman College. But I said it already. More penalties. And it means that Jake Rutherford is sent to the sin bin so he will leave the pitch for seven minutes over here or not rolling against ten here not rolling so many penalties coming in in number ten not rolling to make this count now just wonder if they're going to go for that tap penalty hold on behind the line please I think Henry Peach is standing over that one I think it is Peach, but he doesn't go. He hands it off to Caton. Caton switches the side of play he wants to go for. Caton might go all the way on his own. Should have passed that. Uppingham still looking for a score. Charlie Ray. Another standout in this game. They send it out into their back line. There's another overlap if they want to use it. Here goes Ben Bowman. to be done it's what Uppingham needed we thought we'd lost him in the first half Rocky but thank goodness he's back because he's brought his side level he has indeed and look at that strut he went over a bad angle about two minutes ago but no wonder how he's flying around those tackles such a dangerous player phenomenal player to have on your team he just glides through Come back. What a finish from a great player. All important kick at posts. Well, Freddie Ling, he's about seven or so metres out from touch. He's just outside the 22, so a tight angle to work with and a large distance. Well, we didn't need a confirmation from the referee's whistle because the crowd let us know what's happened. Uppingham are 7 5 up in the Continental Tires Schools Under 18 plate final here at the Stone X Stadium. Rocky Clark, it's game on. Uppingham have thrown down the gauntlet. What can Newman College do from here? Well, you've got to remember Newman are without waiting to be their fly half to as well, so it's going to be Andrew tough Huffy. for the next few minutes, but I think they've got to make it count. Okay. They've got Watch all on. the momentum. Got to look after this kickoff. I must say as well, Uppingham have taken Gawthorpe off, and I thought he was having a blinding game since coming on the number 19. But there's another man who's had a great game, Charlie Ray. I should stop saying stuff like that because he's knocked it on in the... Uh, 
in the tackle now Newman College with a chance Ambrose the captain he's got men outside if he wants to use them and he does Tom Bishop carrying big now inside the 22 but that's a forward pass to Ollie Simpson harsh from the referee but he's got a better angle than you or I he does and I feel there was an opportunity for that pass just to go earlier rather than go over the top he ran such a lovely line just give it him at full tilt I'll keep an eye out for it. I'll keep an eye out for it. We've got 15 minutes left of this second half. 15 minutes left of this game. And at the moment, there's only two points Same in it. patience on the calls. So I think we've also got to be squeaky clean here because if they concede a penalty, it's very much in kicking distance for Newman College. But, Rocky, I doubt with that forward pack you want to settle for three points through the posts. Crouch. No, but you do what it takes, then, to get the win. If I got the, the penalty Boy. in front of the sticks, I would just take that, just in case there's no more opportunities to score. On, nice and easy there, lads. So, uh, referee just settling down this scrum. And I need you to stay flat down in the contest, OK? It's been a just difficult a day for Uppingham in off. the scrums. But Newman need to keep legal with this. How do you dig yourself out of a hole as a forward pack, Rocky, when you are under the cosh, really? You've not had a good game at scrum time. Well, one of the things is you get the nine to hold onto the ball for the initial hit. Okay, make sure it's stable. You go channel one, so a really quick strike. Set! Down the loose edge legs, and if you need the back row flanker to pick it up, you can. Here come Newman College, they couldn't seem to decide which channel to attack down and soft. Take a step. Was tackled hard, thrown Use into please. the ground here at the Stonex Stadium. And Ambrose is supporting his forward pack as they try and carry Ball forward. Van Leel standing over it now. Van Leel carries and drives forward through the initial contact. Okay. Here come Newman College again, they're two metres shy of the Uppingham try line. They have got some space out wide if they want to use it, I doubt they will with the strength of that forward pack. They've gone searching again. And they're held up over the line by Uppingham. Goal line drop out. Well, 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 another opportunity and Uppingham somehow get themselves underneath the ball. They must do it in training because they are on fire with this holding up. You Make see sure how windy it is. Look at this, the sticks that are going forward and back. You can see the Continental Tires flags right. as well, flapping all right around in the wind. And this one is now with Ollie Simpson. Sends it along one more to Varley and Varley going through all the tackles and Varley in the corner! Where has that come from for Newman College? Will Varley with a moment of individual brilliance! And he has silenced the Uppingham fans just as they broke into rapturous rousals. Glorious finish by the speedster there. It was a lovely ball out from Ollie Simpson. But Varley, just like a hot knife through butter, finished. And you never thought he was going to get caught. He was absolutely gassing it along that far side wing. Surely another one to be considered for player of the 12, match, 12. Will Varley, because he's been great since the first whistle went. He has indeed. And to get a try as well. Get his team on the front foot, get his team in the lead. That was a vital score. And you can't help but feeling bad for the Uppingham fans because all of a sudden it seems very deflated over on the other side of the pitch. But great news for Newman College as they look to close the gap. Well, the kick not successful. There's three points in it. But Newman College once again have the lead in this fixture. Here's another look at that fantastic try, Rocky. 
Yeah, he just gets the fend. He goes around the, the front row, hands him off. And yeah, you don't want to be caught as a front row out on those wide channels. He spotted a tired Henry Peach. And there's not much that the tight head could do. Ambrose takes the ball from the spilt kickoff. And Newman College looked to try again with Van Leel. Van Leel! Still Van Leel! And that's a really good tackle from Charlie Ray and Monty Pesham Wilton. How Newman College still have that ball, I do not know. And they're going to do more than just keep the ball. They might go all the way to the corner with Will Varley again to score. Varley steps inside! Will Varley's on fire! And Uppingham School is terrified. That is the second try in quick succession for the fullback. And I can't wait to watch that one again. Cheers, thank you. Another nail in the coffin. That was outstanding by the fullback. Thank you. And it was a missed tackle again. Here's the replay of it. It was Ollie Simpson getting the initial break. Just hit. He held that ball for so long, drawing the defenders in. And what a score for Will Varley. He had three white shirts in his wake, didn't he? As he was running through and he just stepped off his right foot as he needed to. Players that over chase, when you're chasing back, worst thing that can happen to you is somebody stepping back against the grain. Well, the kick's gone up from Charlie Soft, but it's not got the accuracy. So, five points for Newman College. But crucially, crucially they are eight points ahead now just under 10. a converted try is not good enough for Uppingham school good. they need to get a converted try and more and Rocky in the scope of this entire fixture that is a just mountain to climb for, for any team yeah that is huge they need to pretty much score in the next couple of minutes to give himself that fighting chance but of course, all the pressure piles on when you're panicking, trying to get that score. Okay. There's nothing worse when you're down and then a team extends their lead by over a try because you've then panicking, got to score two tries. But Uppingham will be pleased to see Ambrose coming off. He's been a vital player for Newman. I hope it's just cramping and it's nothing too serious because Alfie Ambrose has got a bright future ahead of him after captaining this side today, that's for sure. And here come his Newman College team off the kickoff. Great defence and chase there from Guy Salisbury. Another one who's had a fantastic game as an individual, Rocky. Yeah, he's worked so hard, hasn't he? He's got ball in hand. He's dangerous every time he's got it. Well, and that one's gone out. It's given Newman College a bit of breathing room, but Uppingham need to use it Number, as an opportunity to claw their way back into a winning position. 17 replacement. And Rocky, we've got just over six minutes left. Can you give me maybe three or four nominations for player of the match? Who are some people that we need to keep our eyes on in these closing stages? Yeah, depending on which way the, the game goes, we've What's obviously got? Ben Bowman has been tremendous for Uppingham as well as Charlie Ray, Ned Caton, and then from Newman, working really, really hard, Connor Van Leeuw really putting his hand up, Tom Bishop, Alex Warren, Alfie Ambrose, the captain, Will Varney. There's Caton pouncing on the loose ball for Uppingham School after Edward Alston tried to offload it from the floor. And here comes the captain Ling, passing it on one more to Bowman. Another carry for Alston. Alston trying his best to stay in play. But he is bundled out. And so Newman College will have the put in at the line out. 
That's the only thing. When you run a hard line back in towards the breakdown, obviously there wasn't much space. You're then in jeopardy oh, of being ushered out to touch because you've gone back into the big, strong guys. And you're taking uh, less 16, players out of the game. So I do 16. quite like it when a, when a forward okay. bounces out at the last second, takes two defenders. Well, Henry Peach has had a bit of a breather, but he's come back on him in to replace George Alderson. And Newman College take that safely and have it with Don't Van Leel at the back of their driving mall. And he's going straight through the middle of the driving mall, going one on one with the scrum off. Gets a lovely offload away to corner Zarov. Yes, please. Carrying again. Van Leel is everywhere in this game, and Tom Bishop was the one to carry forward now and that's a lovely pass on to Ollie Brooks Brooks again also finding Ollie Colombo and now it's Uppingham's turn for a line out number six replacement your mark is there that's Louis Nichols going off for Uppingham school now need a bigger gap again he's been had been a workhorse throughout today, hasn't he? Taken back. It's one thing working hard on grass, it's another on a plastic pitch like this. It really takes it out of you when you're putting the yards in. And that's a knock on in the tackle by Charlie Reed. And Newman College has swept this one up. And see a bit of space in behind also. It's a horrible bounce to deal with, but Alston has tidied this one up nicely for Uppingham now. Oh, huge hit going in from Tom Bishop. That was also a very high challenge from the Newman number eight. I don't want to watch that again, and the calls for off are ringing throughout the Stonex Stadium. We'll have to find out what the referee thinks of it all. There's bodies down up, everywhere, so no surprises. We're going to stop for a quick moment, Rocky. Yeah, it was an issue, such a strong carry. Back you go, please. Harry Parker running really hard. Just that collision, we want to make sure the players are okay. It's, you know, time is running I've away from Uppingham now. On field at the moment. Really, really yeah. tough. I haven't seen head contact live. Five minutes. I think it was the whipping action that's yeah. got his neck because he's hit the floor. So we've got Alston down. Let's really hope he's okay. The clock is off, the medics are on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just wanting to listen into what the referee's talking about because obviously we'll come to him when the game restarts, and that's another high challenge, and he's warned both sides throughout this fixture to keep the challenges low and with eight points between the two teams if indeed Tom Bishop does go off for that challenge Rocky could this be a deciding moment across the full 70 minutes it's obviously going to impact them but there's there's not much time left obviously the the clock's still going but the referee stopped his Oh, whilst we've got a little stoppage, the Uppingham uh, school pupils are treating us to a little sing-song. Harmonious. Penalty for Buffston. So it's just a penalty. Yeah, no worries. Yes, 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 yes. That's okay. Uh, about just under five. And Alston is leaving the field. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised by that. It was a huge collision, very high one as well. So Stadsy is walking off and Aegis also. So I send him my best wishes. I'm sure, Rocky, you send him yours too. I do. He's played really well and a big pat on the back. Such a strong on carrier and he's making such Red a good edge, carry. Please. I think Newman are really lucky not to get another card there.
in line with the AR. Nice clean ball there for upping him out the line out. Huge pressure though coming in from Newman College. So what are they going to decide to do with it? Bowman straight in his line and Caton now picks up the offload. Caton needs to be careful not to get isolated and he has done. Newman College could put this in the corner or they could put it through the post and bury the game, Rocky. Seven wide holding on. Yeah, it's tempting, isn't it? Like, because you... You get the time, obviously, to take the penalty kick. That's another go on the 15, lads. chunk of time taken out. Or do you go for the, the killer blow with the line-out drive? And that's what they've opted for. Put them on the edge. On the edge, fellas. Let's be fair, their, uh, their line-out drive has been pretty much unstoppable, hasn't it? It has been stellar from the get-go by Newman College's forward pack and sometimes when you've got a dominant forwards display like they've shown today it makes your job so much easier in the back line you feel like that's exactly what's pushing them towards a potential victory here this afternoon at the Stone X but that's just overthrown and also not thrown straight so Uppingham invited to have another chance and no surprises, they've taken the line out as well, Rocky, because like you say, Newman have been very dominant. Five called. Yeah, Red, open and, up, please. And as a pack that gets Fellas, opted against the to go for the, the line out as a scrum pack, you're very happy when they, uh, when they don't choose to the scrum. Free kick of Arnage. Here come Uppingham with Caton, straightening his line at the defence and... No advantage, we go back for the free kick, that's a knock on. Ollie Brooks was desperately yeah. looking to, to disrupt ten, that please, from a Newman perspective. Here, here come Uppingham's free kick. And carrying with a lot of menace as well, Henry Peach was the one involved most recently. Is there space on that far side for them to take advantage of? Bowman offloaded well to keep the chance alive, but Uppingham can't avoid touch. And we've got to ask the question of how many minutes are left on the referee's watch. Watch off. Well, he's just turned it off as well. We've still got plenty of time left for Uppingham to come back into it, Rocky Clark. But because our time has expired, I think it's time for you to finally pick your player of the match. Who is winning this most coveted award for you? Well, there's a number of players that have put their hands up. Big fan of Connor Van Leel. He's, he's had a really strong game. Alex Warren, Tom Bishop. Alfie Ambrose has led well from the front, but for One me shot. it goes to Will Varley, double try scorer, got himself into the game a hell of a lot. It goes to the fullback. Well, there you go, Newman College's number 15 and fullback. Will Varley is our Continental Tires schools under 18's plate player of the match. And here come his team now with Peshen Wilton. Van Lille. I think that's a name we'll see again, Van Leeuw, he's had such a strong game. Another huge no carry team. out on the far side of the pitch by Newman College and here's another big carry for Kai Dolan. No one! Let go! And picking and going and offloading to the opposition and Newman College, so it could be on here with quick hands. Was that ball? We won't know, because here goes Robert Ryan. He has got support with him. The kick is infield down the wing. And Robert Ryan chases it also to lead the Uppingham charge to try and turn it over. But they can see the penalty You're to fine. Newman College. You're in front of the mark. That time. And they wanted to go quick, however, Here. Charlie Soft was in front of the mark. About 45 seconds, so we still got to play. Number 11 not rolling. And this is nice to see, it's off your screen at the moment though as well. Ben Bowman is actually helping out with a Newman College player who's got some serious cramps. So just again proving the camaraderie and respect between both sides of, uh, of the park really rocky and, and what this great game is about. Yeah, and that's why I love rugby. It doesn't, doesn't matter that you've, you've been knocking lumps out of each other. 
you know, when, when they're in need, if there's an injury or whatever, you quite often see the opposition help out the, the player that's down. So that was great to see. Just shows what teamwork and respect that Rugby Values has. Well, there is the player of the match in question, Will Varley, on our screen right now. And we're just waiting to see whether Newman College are going to make a change or whether they're going to continue with 14 because they've still got a player down. And of course we're going to allow them to take their time as well. It's Jake Rutherford, the fly half. Again, you can't win a game without a good fly half, so he's had a great outing this afternoon. He has. He's been a threat with ball in hand. He's skipped through a few gaps. He's offloading game. He's kicking game. 11 not rolling. He's had an armchair ride with that brilliant forward pack. No, not yet. But then he's enabled his backs to get the ball on. Robert ball Ryan hands. was the one that was penalised, sorry, from Uppingham. He wasn't rolling away, and that's what gave away the penalty. So that's... Newman College given a lot of breathing room, and Van Leel steps in to take the throw. And I know at halftime you said he needed to do more to be considered as your player of the match, but still a stellar outing from the tight head. I'm sure you'd be happy to see him playing for Saris. He he is so close to getting player of the match, but yeah, it was a it was a tough one, and he's and he's he's done so much. He's got his team that front football. Don't change three. Big fan of his. And that is the full time whistle here at the Stonex Stadium. Newman College are your Continental Tire School's under 18 plate champions. And a huge congratulations to Will Varley of Newman College as well. The number 15 is the player that scored the two most decisive tries in this fixture. And he is probably one of the big reasons why Newman College will have happy travels home with a big trophy. Well done, well done. They will indeed. They deserved it. They were the team on top for the majority of the game, but... Commiserations to Uppingham, huge, huge well performance from them. They just well couldn't execute the final pass well just done. when it counted. They had a couple of well opportunities, well and if, well if it had gone their way, we could have seen a well different played. result. Well done. But well that's played. rugby. That's the beauty of well rugby. Done. Well that is the beauty of rugby. And I think a special mention as well, not just to the Uppingham school team, but to all of the pupils in that far stand as well bagpipes and all that made the journey down here today to support their side we heard you we saw you and we really appreciate you and indeed everyone that's come to support these teams across the last couple of days and indeed if you've tuned in online to support as well rocky you must have thoroughly enjoyed the last couple of days uh, i've seen so many great players i've seen some wonderful rugby i'm delighted i can see the future of english rugby just prospering so well so for me i'm i'm a happy prop i'm a happy commentator and a huge thank you to continental tires and england rugby for making finals days like this possible that is the end of school's finals action at the Stonex Stadium here in North London. There's plenty more action tomorrow, though, live from Twickenham. So keep an eye on England Rugby social media in order to make sure you tune into that because, again, it's action that you do not want to miss. And, Rocky, before I let you go and let you enjoy the food that they've got here at Saracens and, indeed, your journey home in rush hour, give me your final thoughts. I'm just so pleased to see how good a quality teams are on here and you know you saw how much it meant to the teams that have gone toe to toe but the, the never give up attitude the quality of the players the quality of the the play that's gone on it has been wonderful to be a part of well rocky clark thank you very much for joining me here at the stone x stadium for the last couple of days and indeed everyone for tuning in online for joining us also and especially those such as the uppingham school pupils who have come to join us at the stone x stadium but Remember, there's plenty more action tomorrow live from Twickenham on England Rugby Social, so keep an eye out for that. And indeed, for more community finals later on in the year, rugby does not stop. We'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.